There we go, we're live. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to a brand new video on Lex Alexis. Today, we've got an afternoon watch along for first one of our afternoon watch alongs for quite some time. Last time we actually did an afternoon watch along was Sunderland and Coventry, which was a very enjoyable game to watch. So I'm hoping that this seven side derby between Bristol City and Cardiff City is going to be the same date. Typically, we don't see many goals in this game. <clears throat> And it's very rare that we actually see one or the other teams doing the double. So I think this is going to be a very competitive competitive game, if I could get my words out. And one thing I am really intrigued is how is Callum O'Dowda going to be looked at if he's starting? Because, of course, he was a Bristol City player. He's now a Cardiff City player. And has arguably been one of Cardiff, if not Cardiff's best players so far this season. With his goal contributions, especially his um, assist of darting runs down the right-hand side, he could have a very important role to play. Got a couple of stories to reveal as well. One member of my family meeting the only goal scorer for Colchester United in yesterday's 3-1 defeat against Leighton Orient. And I'll give you guys my kind of small reactions and previews to what I think has happened in terms of the previous couple of games well, from yesterday. So, you're kind of get to have a good chance to see my reaction on all of these games. First of all, let's see who's here. Jaden, welcome. Once again, fam, welcome. Blue Tennis is no guest, be no party once again. He is outside, so I don't think he'll be popping in today. Uh, I saw one of the most eventful matches in my life. Yes. Oh, you're a Blackpool fan, aren't you? Yeah, I will react to Burnley 3, Blackpool 3. It was an incredible Lancashire derby, and I'm hoping... You know, I mean, the exciting thing is we've still got an abundance of, you know, of Lancashire derbies that are still yet to go ahead. So I'm really excited, actually, now after that. This is the benchmark that all Lancashire derbies are going to have to face. Blue Terry is talking about the boxing from yesterday. Matt actually predicted 3-1 to the Robins. I don't know if he's here at the moment, but that's an interesting prediction because I've gone for 2-1 to Bristol City. So I do think Bristol City might edge this because Cardiff away from home, I've not been too impressed with them so far. And Bristol City, I do think with the firepower that they do potentially have, all they need is one, of, if not even two of those chances to be goals. Then I think Cardiff have got a bit of a mountain to climb. Bailey's predicting nil-nil. Blue Terry's saying 1-1. One, one. Couple of um, predictions there already. Joe has said a nil-nil draw. Honestly, I actually would not be too surprised if it ends in a nil-nil draw. I'm hoping the audio is fine. I've not seen anyone complaining about the audio yet. It looks like it's all fine. Everything is pretty much as prepared as it can be. And I think Capture was working as well. Not had to look at the teams yet, but I will give you my official reaction to the teams. Just before I do start on officially on this stream... If you've not liked the stream already, please do give the stream a like. It really does help the growth of this channel when you do that. I think we set a target of 15 likes at the start of the stream, actually. And we are on 10 at the moment. That's actually not too bad. I've only just realised I forgot to hook up my um, headphones, which I'll just get sorted now as we're doing this. So, guys, please do make sure you do like the stream. It really does help the growth of this channel when you do so. And if you've not hit the subscribe button either, please also do that as well, as we are trying to command our way to 1333 subs. We are on, why is he not gone? There we go. Well, 1330 at the moment. So guys, if you have not hit that subscribe button, it really, really helps the growth of the channel when you do so. It will be great to be a third of the way through from 1000 to 2000, especially on a stream like this as well. Just seeing if that's working. Right, it's worked. There we go. So over there, you shouldn't hear any background noise from the TV. And obviously, I don't want to whisk it. Oh, that's really loud. My headphones are really loud, actually. Hang on a minute. There we go. Right, that's a manageable level. So now we've just done all of that. Let's actually cover Bristol City and Cardiff and see what we have got in front of us. Bristol City's team looks like this. We've got Dan Bentley, we've got Rob Atkinson, Cal Naismith and Zach Viner, which has been typically the front three that Nigel Pearson has stuck with. We've got Joe De Silva and Alex Scott. I don't, is Alex Scott going to be playing that right-hand side then? 
And Hanno and Masengo and Joe Williams playing there. Okay, so I, I was intrigued actually to see if Alex Scott and Hanno and Masengo can play with each other. But it looks like Nigel Pearson is going to give it a go. Joe Williams still in the squad. There's Andres Weiman. There's Naki Wells, who I've not seen too much of this season so far. And Tommy Conway, who has been pretty good actually from for what I have seen of Tommy Conway so far. And I think he may have started last game as well, so I think he keeps his place. Cardiff squad looks like this. You've got Ryan or something. Now, Joel Bagan, that's right. He'll be in for Jamilu Collins because he picked up an injury recently. Cedric Kipre with Perry and G and Marlon Romeo. You've got Rina Motta, Ryan Wintle as your um, basically protectors of the back line. Shea Ojo remains Stoyas, returns to the squad. And Callum Dowder is playing against his former club. And the striker is Max Waters again for Cardiff. Benches look like this. So, Bristol City have got O'Leary close. Uh, Pring, Tanner, Kane Wilson, Andy Keane and Chris Martin. Yeah, Chris Martin on the bench is a bit of a surprise, but he could be a good option if things are not going well for Bristol City. For card, if you've got Onwick, you've got Simpson, Joe Walls, Ruben Colwell, Philogene Bidace there, Mark Harris and Keon Etete. And in case you missed it yesterday, because we did cover the championship table and it should be up to date now. So Sheffield United, with the only team to have got into double figures in terms of points so far. Three wins, a draw and a loss so far for them. Watford slowly just behind. Not lost a game so far. Reading, Blackburn, Sunderland and Hull, a very unlikely top six, are the ones that finished at top six places. Norwich in seventh. Cardiff could maybe, just maybe, go to the top of the table if they have a thrashing for... Oh, that's a nice goal. I was, look, I was, they were just showing me um, Furlong's goal against um, Hull. It looks like they're going to show the whole highlight reel for West Brom there. But no, this is um, Sheffield United. So that's a marauding run by Indai. Oh, that's a gorgeous goal by Indai. Brilliant work. I mean, you just saw that. He robs the ball and runs through the whole half of the pitch to get into the score sheet. Right. We're going a bit off the topic there. So Norwich just below. Cardiff could be joint on points with Sheffield United and finish at least second place. They're going to have to smash um, Bristol City, though, if they're going to have to be um, overtaking Sheffield United, though, because as you see, their goal difference is five, whilst as Cardiff's is only one. So maybe not top, but they can definitely be right up there. Preston just below them. Look at that. One goal, but zero conceded. Mirwall just behind, Blackpool just behind, having a pretty good start to the season, Blackpool, I've got to be honest, um, better from what I expected. Rotherham with six goals scored and only two goals conceded, and that is why Rotherham are up there. It's their tight defence at the moment. West Brom rise a couple of places, Wigan up there with their first win of the season, also undefeated. Burnley, um, 15th right now, which is where they're not want to be. QPR, Birmingham falling a bit. Luton rise a couple of places with their first win of the season. Still a lot of work to do for Luton, though. Swansea falling down a couple of places. Bristol City really need to try and get something there. If they lose pretty heavily, in fact, by a three-goal margin, they will fall below Stoke City, but they definitely can't finish in the bottom three as of now. Huddersfield, Middlesbrough and Coventry will stay in that bottom three, but look at that. Five games for Middlesbrough to be in the bottom three. Is not great, conceding nine goals in the process. In fact, if I'm right in saying yes, no team has actually conceded more goals than Middlesbrough right now. And that is really, really disappointing. That's why Middlesbrough are down there in the table. Blue Terry says, look like we're finally signing a striker. I need to look at that um, in terms of transfers at the moment because I've not been too up to date with those, but I'll definitely have a look. Blackpool equal to Norwich, yeah, on points at least. Probably not goal difference, but at least on points. It's a very, in the first couple of games, the table's very, very tight. And I'm seeing it in the Premier League as well. It's when you get to game 10, I say, when the table starts forming its sections. You've got your top six um, candidates, then you've got your mid-table lot, and then you start getting your bottom three or bottom five, six um, allocated as well. So, Give it till probably the end of September we'll start seeing those sections form. But whilst it's still in August and it's still really, really tight in the table, this is going to make things very, very exciting. You know, I was saying that yesterday, I think West Brom rose up up to 10 places just by winning a game. 
And that is how much movement you can get in the table at the moment for how um, close it is. Ethan has just popped in as a Stoke fan. Middlesbrough should have beaten us. We didn't deserve the draw at all. Well, you should take every point you can right now. Stoke are kind of struggling for points so far this season. And so have Middlesbrough. It looks like two teams lacking confidence and maybe being weighted too much on their expectations because both Stoke and Middlesbrough do expect to be right up there in the table at least and both are kind of slumping at the moment with their form actually um so this is a stat I didn't realize Bristol City have dropped the most points from um winning positions and currently they've already dropped eight and that's right they dropped three against Hull I'm trying to think of other examples of um, Bristol City dropping points. They dropped three against um, Sunderland as well. So that's at least six just by that alone. But they've already lost that. And then with the two others, they must have been winning but then drawn again. I can't actually remember what team um, Bristol City drew with. It was their last game. Wigan. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I believe they were beating Wigan. But then they did draw that. Wow. Wow. Uh, Charlie, welcome to the stream. Good to see all of you. It's really nice to see a good number of you here already. Uh, so, I've already covered the teams. I've already covered the table. I'll just quickly share about a story that Elliot had last night. So, you know Elliot, he was involved in the Sixer side. He was at a club and he may have met Noah Chilvers from Colchester. I think he calls him Chil Chilvers, but I call him Chilvers anyway. Which I just thought, that is awesome, um, actually. So, and maybe a bit much for him to be clubbing when Colchester lost very badly to Leighton Orient. To be fair, I may give him the benefit of the doubt because he was the actual goal scorer for Colchester in their 3-1 defeat. But that was so cool. I don't think Elliot took a picture of him, but he saw him. <laughs> and he apparently had a couple of mates with him as well who were just trolling him there, so... That was quite awesome, actually. Kind of probably trumps my Calder Dragon and um, Richard Iwadi meetups there. But an actual footballer there. <clears throat> so they're going through the teams of Sky Sports now. Just in case if any of you have just popped by, I'll also cover the teams very quickly as well and give you my reaction. Bristol City got Bentley, Atkinson, Cal Naismith and Zach Viner as the back three, which has been pretty much the same back three. Jay De Silva, Alex Scott's playing there. I'm really intrigued to see if Noah Masengo and um, Alex Scott can all play together because they're kind of playing very similar positions. Joe Williams, Andres Weiman there, and you've got Naki Wells and Tommy Conway. So Chris Martin on the bench for that game at the moment. For Cardiff, they've got Ryan Allsop staying in goal. Joel Bagan is replacing the injured Jamilu Collins. You've got Cedric Kipre, Perry NG, and Marlon Romeo as the other three regular uh, defenders. You've got uh, Andy Rina Motta, Ryan Wintle. Then you've got Shane Ojo, Romain Soyes, who returns in the squad. Callum Odelda in the right hand side playing against his former club. And Max Waters up front. Bench for Cardiff. You've got Philo Jean Bides on the bench there. Um, the only goal scorer in their 1 0 win against Cardiff. With Ruben Cobble there as well. Jack Simpson, Ulwick, and Mark Harris. You've got some good options from both teams on the bench. It should hopefully be a good game. I mean, I predicted 2-1, but any other final predictions, do let me know. We're literally less than a minute till kickoff right now. Apparently, since August 2018 in the Championship, Andres Weiman has had the second most goals and assists behind top Championship goal scorer from last season, Alexander Mitrovic, by only eight goal contributions, actually. So he can definitely overtake Mitrovic. And I've got to say, that is quite impressive for Mitrovic. To have that consistency when going up to the Prem and down to the Championship each time. Uh, Conister, welcome to stream. And thank you for the donation, by the way, yesterday as well, Conister. I really do appreciate it. Now, most goals uh, for Cardiff this season, most assists for Cardiff this season, most shots on target for Cardiff this season. Callum O'Dowd has been the best player so far. Right, I've not got the time already, so that might be delayed. But let's see if I can quickly get it ready. Looks like Bristol City are going to kick off this game at the moment. Uh, whilst I get that sorted, guys, if you've not hit the like button on the stream yet, please do do so. It really does help the growth of this channel when you do that. If you've not hit the subscribe button either, please also do that as well. That also really helps. Right, Naki Wells and Vyman standing over the penalty. Uh, well, the centre circle, they're about to kick off. Ashton Gate, 12pm kickoff. Seven-side derby number one. Of this season is officially kicked off. 
Let's see what result we'll get. Bristol City kick things off here. And already Cardiff win it back. They've been working, well, they've been workhorses, um, Cardiff this season. They've really have been working a lot um, on, you know, just working off the ball, which has been a really great improvement of them there. I actually thought I forgot some water, but I got some water there, luckily. Ball's gonna out of play, will be a throw in to Cardiff. So the final time, um, just for subscriptions, just in case you were thinking of how many subscribers I've currently got at the moment, we're on 1,330. If we get to 1,333 today, that will be a terrific achievement for this channel, and I am already appreciative of everyone that has gotten involved in this channel so far. <coughs> Bless me. Sorry about that. Tried to divert myself away from the uh, microphone there. Uh, okay, so we've got a free kick for Cardiff in their half and they're just going to pass it back to Ryan also. Here's Marlon Romeo, who's been a big surprise actually this season. Oh, now then, Tommy Conway already trying to get involved with the press. Unfortunately, not doing so well there. So it's a throw into Cardiff. Already Conway putting the pressure on Perry NG, which is what you'd like to see so far. You'd like to see both teams running that extra mile to win the ball. Great um, great head-to-head -head so far. Right, free kick awarded to Cardiff there. You have the prediction results done for full-time or half-time of the Chelsea game. If you're doing that again, thank you so much for that. I mean, I'll, I'll look at it as well, but... I need to do the Prems as well, actually. I mean, the Premier Leagues I won't do probably till Man United have finished playing Liverpool. That's when I'll start doing it. Charlie's got a fun fact alert. Chelsea have never beaten Leeds in back-to-back -back games at Ellen Road. Ah, thanks for telling me that. That's put me in a really, really great state of mind before this game. Yeah, I might be right, actually, now that I think about it. Even when um, Leeds potentially got relegated, Chelsea weren't at their strongest yet. Right, ooh, Okay. Bristol City now winning the ball. They've got a small counter-attack going there. Oh. Is it great defending by Kit Prey? I think it is great defending by Kit Prey. He gets ahead of Naki Wells. Great battle already between Naki Wells and Cedric Kit Prey there. The ball's kind of pinballing there. And Bristol City got a throw in. I'm liking the tempo of this game so far. It's promising something really good there. I don't want to jinx it, but... When you when the tempo's that intense already in the opening two, three minutes, you do tend to get a really good game on your hand. Cedric Hippo's done well there, but it's another throw in for Bristol City. Bristol City now having a small spell of possession. Looks like it's gonna be Is it Alex Scott, I think, taking the throw in. Yeah, I think it's Alex Scott taking the throw in. Uh what does Gordon Fan says today? Doesn't want anyone to score. I guessing for your predictions, I'd say. I mean, a Bristol City win would do me nicely. 2-1, I predicted. And it's... So I don't know what it is about some side derbies. They don't tend to get many goals, but sometimes you get the odd goal. Oh, okay. Intercepted. Here's Hanno and Masengo against Andy Rina Motta. He's done well. Okay, at the moment. That's a long ball by Naismith. And a bit of an aerial battle there. And we're going to get a small stoppage in play because I think we had a clash of heads. Oh dear, here come the medical staff. That's not good. Oh dear. I am almost certain Callum O'Dowder was the one who received um, the treatment for Cardiff. But I didn't really see who from Bristol City has gone down. I hope it's not it's not Conway. Maybe it was... Um, didn't actually manage to see who's gone down there. Hopefully we don't get any early substitutions because it will just take away the pacing of the game. And all these teams, both of them so far, have actually played quite well, actually. So I'll be really upset um, for either one of them if they're going to have a disruption in their first team. So we had a head collision there. So it was a long, ambitious ball by Cal Naismith trying to um, force an attack on the right-hand side. It may be Joe, Be Joe Bacon, actually. They've got that. I need to see it again. I didn't really get to see who clashed heads. It's, it doesn't look so good, whatever it is. So I'm trying to see. I don't think, right. Still a little bit of treatment going around. 
It may have been Joel Bagan down for Cardiff, but I didn't really see who else was there. Tom, welcome to the stream. Right, it was Alex Scott that did get the collision. I thought it was him, but I wasn't too sure. I think Alex Scott is fine, but if that is Joel Bagan that's down, what other options am I going to have for left back? Remember, he's the second choice left back replacing Jamini Collins. This is not good if it is Joel Bagan who's indeed down. Oh, he's sitting up now. It's a relief because there could have been a risk of him being concussed from that. Well, it looks like we're going to get quite a fair bit of stoppage time for the first half at least. Oh, he's back up. Wow. That definitely took a bit of time. Is he, is he well enough to play? It may be an early substitution. <laughs> At least doesn't believe it. He says he's fine. Card is full of divers. <laughs> well, I shouldn't laugh, really. It's never nice. Right, okay. So let's see this again. Finally, a replay. So it was Cal Naismith with a very ambitious ball trying to find Alex Scott. Oh! Ho, ho. Wow. Didn't look nice. Um, wow. I hope he's fine. I think Alex Scott is okay now. But there we go. I think it is an early substitution for Cardiff. And I think it is Joel Bagan that's going off. And who's going on the pitch? It looks like it's um, Jack Simpson that's going on there. One of their new transfers. That game yesterday for Solio Mills was mental. Oh, 100%. 100% indeed. Yeah, I mean, you, I remember you complaining, saying that Solihull were going to get relegated. You're 3-0 down to Scunthorpe. Newly relegated Scunthorpe, you know, from the actual EFL itself. And you turn a four-goal comeback, which is incredible. Right, Joel Bagan is indeed going off. And Jack Simpson is going on. It was, yeah, it looked really bad on the replay. It, I, I would say, in real life, it didn't look too bad. But on the replay, it looked a lot worse than what it did. Yeah, Jack Simpson is going on for Joel Bagan. Literally, I don't think an ideal position for someone to get injured in. Because right now, Steve Morrison's really going to run out of fullbacks if he's not careful. Ellis Smith says, maybe I was wrong. Let's hope Cardiff get battered. Only one team in Wales up the swans. It's good to see a little bit of rivalry sometimes in the chat. As long as it's not incredibly toxic, I don't really mind it. So, Dalros says, the girl, a girl put Leeds to beat Chelsea Newcastle to beat Man City. Oh, right, okay. Well, it's... You know, maybe she might be up to something. You never know. You sometimes never know. I mean, I would say Newcastle, Man City. I'd be very shocked if Newcastle get anything so far. If they were to get anything against Man City, they sh should have beaten Brighton away from home. And for me, I don't think they're quite ready to tackle Man City as of yet. Leeds beating Chelsea, you just never know, Chelsea. They're not the most consistent team in the world anymore. <laughs> Excuse me. Right, so that's going to be at least... Five, six minutes of added time, I'd say. Maybe a little bit less than that. But yeah, I, I would say I'll be surprised if we don't get at least four minutes of added time in this first half. Finally, players resumed. Cardiff have been a much better start for what Bristol City have had so far. But both teams have reinvested quite a fair bit in their squads. And I would arguably say both teams be quite smart in the transfer market as well. Marlon Romeo, Marlon Romeo with the clearance. It's gone to Zach Viner, who will take a throw in for uh, Bristol City. 20 minutes of added time. Oh, I don't know that much, but that'll be interesting. Are there any streams for the 2 p.m. Premier League matches? Well, Matt's streaming, I believe, Man City Newcastle, but I don't know if that's a 2 p.m. kickoff. I can't actually remember myself. I don't know, I, I don't recall many people streaming um, Leeds and Chelsea. No, it's half four, isn't it, um, Newcastle City. So we've got West Ham, Brighton and Leeds, Chelsea. I don't know who would be streaming that. Right, Callum O'Dowd, trying to make a run, but he's offside. 
Yeah, it is half four. Thanks for nine of you watching. I really appreciate the support so far. We're at 40 nights, guys. We're nearly at 50 nights. And in fact, I need to replace my pinned comment, actually. Um, it's no longer really a relevant pinned comment. Matt's just given a wave. I'll give you a wave back. Matt, welcome to the stream. And dare I say as well, huge congratulations in the developments of your channel so far. Have joined your Betfair uh, fantasy team, actually. No idea how it's done. All I know, Estupinian was in my team, where I think he's bagged a couple of goals yesterday. But then I also remember Ian Matson was very likely on my team as well, and it's got himself red carded. So I, you can never have you know a flawless run in terms of fantasy or whatever predictions, all of that stuff. There's always something that dashes your hopes, and Ian Matson losing his head is one of those moments. And I would dare say that I mean because you've seen him quite a lot in Coventry last year with him um, being on loan from Chelsea to Coventry last season. Has there ever been an example where Ian Matson's lost his head like that? Because that's a first for me, even just closely observing him at times, you know, trying to develop in the Chelsea youth squad. This this is completely out of his character for what I've seen um, from last time. Liam says, yo, welcome to the stream, Liam. Everyone do give Liam a warm welcome. Daraj uh, says, Bernie equals draw merchants and bottle jobs. I would definitely say they bottled um, beating Blackpool. When you go 3-1 up at half time, and then you draw 3-3. Three, three. It's no excuse. It's no excuse, really. And company, I think, have got a couple of things incorrect there. And I do think the pressure is starting to get to Burnley a little bit. They, You know, since their opening day win against um, Huddersfield, they've not won a game since. So they've got to be very, very careful. And Vincent Company, I think, is slowly learning the hard way how tough the championship is. I'm not talking a lot about this game, old Washi, because it's kind of going out of play at the moment. It's got a good intensity to it, although I am getting senses of it being quite scrappy. A load of teams drawing fouls from both um, sides, unfortunately, and it's actually resulting in an early substitution. Joel Bagan has gone off the pitch, and obviously Jack Simpson pretty much being the only recognisable centre-back or whatever, or full-back they have on the bench, is taking its place. And it's a bit of a blow, actually, because... Their first choice left back, Jamie Collins, has picked up an injury. So Joel Bagan makes his first half of the season. And within three minutes, he's got, I would dare say, concussion. And now he's gone off the pitch already. So not ideal for Cardiff. And we'll see if that moment may have cost them there. I tell you what, teams that play off in the back always do give me a heart attack. Matt's have got a red card for us last season. But I'm sure it was a uh, last man red card. Not as bad as you see where he lost his cool. Yeah, because I, I almost recall that I don't think it was the first red card that Matson's had, but I've never seen him lose his call like that before. That was the first for me. Um, It was against Bristol City. Darbo sent off against Preston there. Oh, really? Um, Is Ellis talking to me about who I support? So, in a weird way, I'll, I'll explain what I support. So, I'm an Essex lad, so I look at Colchester being the only Essex team left in the EFL. A bad defeat for them yesterday, losing to Leighton Norrie by three goals to one. Lua Chilvers being the only one getting the consolation goal, which actually my brother met last night actually in the club. Um, so I look at Colchester, uh, Chelsea with my local team, which we actually beat, um, recently relegated Weymouth from the National League, um, which I think was actually quite a good result for Chelsea there. And it turns, oh, that's a good ball. If Conway's onside, this could be a big chance. Conway, good save by also rebound by Oh my gosh. Oh, Andy Vyman, you should do better there. Probably a bit harsh for me to say that. Gosh, your first opening there. Zach Viner. Oh, my God. I know, it's Jada Silva. He may have just been on Tom Conway there. Brilliantly weighted pass. It's a good save by Allsop. Oh, if he hit it down low, Vyman, it could have been a chance. He may have been blocked off the line anyway because the card of defenders, to be fair to them, did track back very quickly. Wow, that was a big, big moment in this game. First big chance of the game goes to Bristol City and Tommy Conway. Um, yeah, and also Chelsea fan. I was about to say that before Tommy Conway di um, disrupted um, uh, me explaining what team I support. So yeah, in terms of my Premier League team, my family support Chelsea, so I support Chelsea as well from that as well. Been to a stadium tour for them as well. It's actually one of my most viewed videos on my channel, actually. Uh, when am I going to smash 1.5k in September? I'm going to say October more realistic at the moment. But you don't know. It depends, really. Because some streams 
just performed much better than others. You know, I remember Norwich Millwall Friday did quite well, but then the 3 p.m. Saturday didn't do so well. It's really just down to timing. It really is down to the YouTube algorithm is always a very unpredictable one to try and get control. And, you know, it's sometimes you just got to wait for one moment to shine. But i am really been enjoying these watch-alongs, really. I don't know how sustainable I'm going to keep doing these watch-alongs, especially when my... Um, my full-time work is going to expect me to start studying to become an accountant. So that's going to be very, very interesting to try and balance all of that. Hopefully by that time I can get more people involved to do stuff for my videos. Cardiff take a corner and it's defended. Uh, no championship team. No. And that's kind of a unique thing. I look at the championship because I actually do like how competitive the championship is, but I don't really want to come across as biased for any other team. A bit like a Benjamin Bloom in a way. I mean, Technically, he started off supporting uh, Ipswich, which he still does, to be fair. But, you know, they've not been in the championship. Although, based on the start that Ipswich have made this season, they may have a small chance. Although, you never know uh, with Ipswich Town. You know, they had a great start, actually, in their first season back in League One for what seems like an eternity. And then, suddenly, they drop off a cliff. Um, Dara says 5-2. So he's talking about the West Brom and Hull result, I'm guessing. That was a huge demolition job by West Brom, which I think has been long overdue. And Hull, I definitely think they've been long overdue from a defeat as well. Throwing for Bristol City. They're a bit surprised by that. So Hull were unbeaten going into the game against West Brom. You know, they were doing all right, but I wouldn't say that they were performing like a team in the top of the table, they've just been really clinical. A bit similar to what Reading were last year. You know, not playing so well, but being very, very clinical. Not last year, but two years before, when they had uh, Panovic's first season. But um, this time was a really good example of West Brom now suddenly getting the result they deserve. Because West Brom have been down there in the table, but they've definitely not been getting the points they've deserved. And this has been the first signs of West Brom getting it mostly right. I say mostly right because if it was mostly right, it would be 5 0 and very dominant. How have Middlesbrough not won yet? I think the pressure is getting to them personally. They have made the recent signing of Rodrigo Muniz from Fulham on a loan deal. And I do think goals is a big problem for them as well. I do think not having a recognised striker who's a great quality for the championship is another situation for them you know I the only strikers performance I've really seen so far from them this season is when Chuba Akpon scored two goals for them oh Charles for Bristol City maybe no it's cleared Cardiff have recovered well Bristol City win it back Joe Williams here's Conway in the left hand side he's in the box right now can he get across he does oh is it disallowed I think it's been disallowed. Oh, no. Okay, so in short, the cross came in from Conway. Also caught it, but kind of fell back, still holding the ball. And Hano Emerson-Go gets a strong header on the ball, but kind of takes out Allsop in the process. So clearly, it's no goal because they believed Hano Emerson-Go has fouled Allsop. No goal so far. It has been disallowed. Right, so let's see this again. Conway does really well. Cross comes in. Bit of a deflection. Yep, yeah, so he runs back all sort to try and catch it. Leans back slightly. Or maybe environment actually with the cross. I do apologise. Um, yeah, so also does get two hands and pretty safe. And then Hano Masengo kind of just is in the way. Yeah, it's under environment. Sorry, the cross actually. And... Yeah, I understand why it's not being disallowed, but I can understand why Bristol City fans are really not going to be happy with all stop there. Um, you have to admit, commentary the next three fixtures are hard. We have Preston, Hull and Norwich. I think Norwich may... Uh, no, not Hodge. I think Hull could be okay, but Preston just going to have to try and break down their defence and be patient. And net, Well, I mean... It's almost likely you won't lose to Preston because they really cannot score a goal for Toffee right now. Norwich, I think, will be your hardest one, personally. Falls on Luton Town this season, I think a bit similar to West Brom. They've been playing in a way that they've just not been getting the points they've deserved. And finally, this season, they've kind of had a performance which has reflected how they've started this season so far. And now they've got the points in the board to reflect that. Keepers are too protected, says Liam there. 
I can understand that. There is that debate where goalkeepers do get a bit too overprotective there. Uh, Liam says it should count. Tom's saying low goal. Yep. Personally, I understand why it's not been disallowed. But I do also, in hindsight, can understand why it would be looked at it being a bit soft as well. I think it's just the fact of the matter is, had he not got two hands on the ball, then I think it would have been given. But because also looked pretty comfortable and got two hands on the ball and was pretty secure with it, and Vyman, not Vyman, Masengo barged into him, that's why it's been disallowed and it's been given as a foul. Okay. Callum Odalda, but gives the ball away. Oh, dear me. And kick three fouls, Naki Wells, and a free kick's been awarded to Bristol City. That was a really good chance, actually, for Carlo to go on the counter-attack, but Callum Odalda giving the ball away. Very cool. That's a bad challenge by Kipro. Just saw it. Got nowhere near the ball and definitely took a good sweep of his legs there. I did say, it, I think it'll be quite open, but it's got that scrappiness to it as well. And that could be what prevents... Um, this game getting any goals potentially right guys um, if you've not liked the stream please do like the stream it does really help we're on 16 likes apparently so we've hit our 15 like target could get oh Charles maybe free kick Naki Wells against Romeo Jay De Silva Hanno Masengo too much power on Masengo as a goal kick Bristol will win this game. I'm going to the Coventry versus Preston at the CBS. And that's if the CBS should be recovered by, by that time, which I have heard there is some progress in getting it recovered. So sooner it gets recovered, sooner uh, the sooner that Coventry can now start catching up on their games. Uh, okay, so yeah, goal kick awarded to Cardiff since um, Hanno Masenga gave the ball away there. I was just going to plug the channel very quickly. Thank you for 16 likes so far. If we could push to 20 likes before the 30th minute, that would be an incredible achievement for the channel. It really, really would. In terms of subscriptions, we're on 1,331. So thank you guys so much for that. We're two away from 1,333, which will be the target. Um, well, it will be the hot. Well, it will be the third way uh, through from 1,000 uh, to 2,000, which will be um, really exciting for the channel. So guys, if you've not hit the subscribe button there, please also do that. It does really help as well. Whilst we're in the 22nd minute, let's just quickly look at some stats. As you can see, Bristol City looking a little bit more um, likely to score with the attack momentum. Zero shots for Cardiff so far. Two shots for Bristol City with one on target, which was that Conway chance. One corner kick there. Uh, two big chances for Car uh, for Bristol City and two missed. So they counted Conway and Vyman's chance as chances miss. All chance. Conway again. Shot. Oh, he's been completely missed. Jada Silver can pick it back up. Right. Here's Conway again. Here's Jada Silver. Blocked by Romeo. Corner. Oh, how have Bristol City not even got a meaningful chance out of that? So, Romeo does... Well, Romeo gives the ball away poorly. Conway having a great game so far. Cross comes in. It's blocked. Oh, Joe Williams is the one that miss kicks it entirely. Oh, they get away with it there. Joe Williams tries to swing for the ball, but misses it completely. It's disappointing for the former Wigan player. And it's scored with the corner. It's a poor corner. It's defended by Romeo, and it's booted away. Um, Shiva Hish, sorry if I've not said your name, says, De Silva to score in the 26th minute. Well, you've got two minutes left for potentially that uh, to happen there. Is Zach Viner. Masengo, and it's a throw into Bristol City. Um, is the ball in the championship team stressful? Or ma oh, hang on. Oh, Masengo again with the cross this time. And it's a throw into Cardiff. I tell you what, Cardiff have not threatened one bit. They really have not. Cardiff zero shots, and Bristol City already with three, and six touches in Cardiff's box as well. Thing is with Preston is that they can't score, but they haven't conceded a single goal. Well, I think it's about patience with Preston, honestly. I don't think I would almost invite them to try and get them to score because I do think they're lacking confidence there, and then in a way, pounce on them trying to overcommit and to get a goal. 
I think Preston are going to be full of frustration right now for the fact that they've done so well to be as tight as they are, but not to be as attacking as they are. Perry and G's going to take the throne for Cardiff. Here's Romain Sawyer, so I've barely seen touch the ball for Cardiff so far. All Perry and G trying to do a free ball to Canelo down, it doesn't quite work. Williams passes it back to Dan Bentley. Dan Bentley passing it out from the back to Cal Naismith. This is an interesting ball and it's a throw into Bristol City. I definitely am seeing Bristol City being a better team at the moment for what I can see. So I'm just getting, yeah, number four is Cal Naismith. Number five is Rob Atkinson. There we go. That's pretty much the only name for Bristol City I've not said so far. Um, I've barely seen Max Waters or Shea Ojo, which says a lot, to be honest. Not really seen too much of Ryan Winter either. A lot of the players I've been repeating is the Car uh, Cardiff's back line. Although here, come, here comes maybe an opportunity there. Here's Romain Sawyers. Okay, Romeo. Oh, gives the ball straight to Hanno and Masengo. Nothing been given there. This could be a small opportunity. Conway. Naki Wells. Is he going to give it to Jada Silva? He's been pressed by Shea Ojo. And Romeo does well. And Romeo wins a free kick for Cardiff. A lot of people ain't pressed in the chat. Don't tell Ben HD that. Uh, this happened last season. The country versus Bournemouth for CBS. We ended up losing 3-0 to Bournemouth. I didn't score in three games. It's just about approaching it the right way, isn't it? Here's Odalda. A lot of booing at Odalda, I can already hear. Here's Romain Sawyers with the ball. First, oh, I was going to say first touch in the penalty box, but he didn't find a Cardiff City player. Liam hates Preston because he's a Bernie fan. That's right, you know, having that Lancashire rivalry within you there. Cardiff have not threatened Bentley at all. He really could have been on holiday so far, Dan Bentley. He's only had... I'd say five touches for goal kicks and stuff and maybe playing out from the back, which Bristol City have been playing so far. It can be a dangerous game, though. Long goal kick now. Jada Silva wins it. Oh, OK, a bit of a barge, but nothing nothing given. Cedric Kipra does very well to get past Van Du Varman there. Playing out from the back there. Bristol City pressing. Here's Jack Simpson. Here's Perry and Jeep. It's like Perry and G's now gone to the fullback position with um, Jack Simpson playing at centre back, which kind of makes sense to me. And yeah, hang on a minute. Here's Perry and G back on the ball. Oh, is he on side, O'Dowder? He is. Okay, interesting. First corner for Cardiff. I knew they can eventually get a potential chance there. This could be the first touches that Cardiff have in Bristol City's penalty box as well. So, Perry and G with the creative ball. O'Dowda making these runs that have just been causing so many teams troubles this season. Now Bristol City getting exposed with it as well. And it is good defending, actually. Um, who was it? It was by Alex Scott, actually. So, Alex Scott some, with some great defending there. But he does concede a corner. And we'll see if Cardiff can use their set pieces to get the edge here. Ryan Wintour taking the corner. Corner taken. Oh, bit of a mess. But it is somewhat cleared. Shea Ojo. Who have barely seen at all in this game. We've got an actual touch in Bristol City's penalty box from a Cardiff City player. Corner again, I say. Yeah, it's another corner. Um... Is supporting the Chelsea team stressful or Man United? Well, I, I wouldn't know because I don't support Man United, really. I, I mean, I guess that's more of a comment for everyone else, really, to be honest, if anyone supports Man United and another championship team. But, I mean, in terms of Premier League games, I think there's a lot more riding it for me, with me being a Chelsea fan as well. Ryan Wintle with the corner again. It's poor. It's cleared. Although it is one back, but they've given the ball away again, Cardiff there. 
Um, ball. Okay, maybe. It's good defending by Cal Naismith against Shea Ojo. Bit of a moment there. He kind of took his boot off there. Will I be an Ipswich fan, says Coniston. I don't want to admit to it yet, but I will be going to some Ipswich games throughout the season. You know, I'm just taking advantage of the fact I've got a weekly ticket to go to Ipswich, so I can't miss that opportunity. And definitely, if we see Ipswich get promoted to the Championship, that would even be even better for me. It would, it would feel more, you know, it'd feel a lot more sense doing Championship content where I'm seeing Ipswich play football. I think being a football fan is stressful because I think we put unnecessary pressure and expectations on so many teams and stuff like that. I normally find it the most calming when we're watching a game where there's nothing to play for and it doesn't involve our own team. That's the... That's, oh, this is a big... Oh, no. Ooh. I thought Bristol City were going to have an opening there. Conway's a decent player. He is a decent player indeed. I'm not that local in Ipswich. I'm, I would like to say I live more in Essex than in Suffolk. But I am spending my work hours in Ipswich, which is a long train journey. But because I'm spending a lot of time in Ipswich, that's why I'm going to be spending more time in there. Okay, here's hello, Bissega. Sorry for yawning, honestly. It's not been a boring game, but I guess it's just me being always very, very tired. It's been, this game's kind of slowed down a little bit, you know, unfortunately we've had that one big chance for um, Conway, but other than that, it's been, I wouldn't say flat, but it's just been a typical scrappy derby, really. Um, If you support Man City, there's no need to be stressful, if you support Man United, Chelsea, you need to be stressful. Yeah, any any other team you'd be stressful, and I think Arsenal fans are not being stressed at the moment. But guarantee you, when they lose their first game of the season, which they will, they won't be invincible. Like what people were trying to make out on their tweets yesterday, they won't be invincible. But when they do lose their first game, of Arsenal, it's going to be incredibly stressful. They have got Man United, but in a way, I actually think they're well up for Man United at the moment. I think Man United at the moment are kind of there for the taking, unless they could definitely improve. The squad in the next couple of weeks or so, which I don't really see them doing, seeing how incompetent um, the ownership and the um, directors have been. That's a great pass by Ojo. Oh! What a save by Bentley. That was a brilliant pass by Shea Ojo to find Remain Sawyers. And Sawyers does even better to keep the ball in play. Definitely onside. Oh, I think... Did it come off the post? I don't know if Bentley made a save. We'll see if it was a corner. And, oh, it was probably half in, half out. There is a small touch from Bentley. It is a corner to Cardiff again. Cardiff now starting to turn a screw again. Corner comes in. Not quite clear. Kit prey. Oh, bit of a scrappy clearance, but Bristol City just recover it. And it's a free kick to Bristol City. Well, the station, well, I wouldn't even say it's, the station's about a five minute walk from Portman Road. God, excuse me. I think a lot of controversy is going to be Ipswich, uh, not Ipswich, um, Bristol City's disallowed goal as well. So we've had a disallowed goal, a good chance for Conway and Andres Varner missing an open goal, which I think was a bit harsh for me to be. Um, Talking Andre Farmer down a little bit because it's tough. But had he taken a touch and rifled it, I think that would have been a goal. It's just poor decision making at the final three. And also for Cardiff, not until the final five, well, last five minutes, have they started to enter in this game. They really were pretty dominated, actually, by Bristol City. Here's Conway. Oh, is it? A, it is a corner to Bristol City now. Kipre doing pretty well with his physicality right now. Let me know, guys, what you think of this game so far in the live chat and the comments. It is, it is always really interesting to know what's going on with that. In fact, what I might do is do a poll. Because, I mean, I don't know why I didn't do a poll, but I will do one now. Uh, let's do one. So, what's... Why's caps lock on? What will happen in this game? 
As this corner goes in, let's see if there's anything going to be happening there. Oh, short corner. Ah. Oh. Once again, just a final lack of quality with the corners. And there is going to be our first yellow card of the game to Hanno and Masengo. Probably anyone could have predicted that, to be honest. He does get a lot of um, yellow cards, Hanno and Masengo. So pretty much stopping um, Ojo trying to run forward. Because it's not in um, their half of the pitch, it's not going to be a red card offence, but it is indeed a yellow card offence. There we go. So I should unpin that message now. Okay, we've got the final 10 minutes just before half time. If you guys have not supported the channel already, please do give the stream a like. It does tremendously help. We're on 16 likes. Thank you guys so much for supporting this channel. Let's try and get to 20 before half time. I was just going to say thank you to whoever's just subscribed because we are on 1,332. That's the highest figure I've seen my subs total go so far. So we're one away from 1,333, which will be a third of the way between 1,000 and 2,000. So guys, if you really want to continue showing support for the channel, please do like and subscribe. It really does help the growth of this channel. Sharing the channel is a good way to get my name out there as well. It really helps as well doing that as well. There's all abundance of things that you can do. It's probably, you know, it's shocking for actually how many things you can do to keep this channel going. But every little bit of help, you know, every little thing does help for this channel. It really does. 36th minute. It's gone back to Ryan Allsop and Gall. Naki Wells pressing in. Ryan Allsop's been a bit cool with his feet so far. Better than David De Gea, I'll tell you that. Here's Kipre on the ball. I mean, creative pass actually by Simpson there. Kipre now just leading the charge. A long ball. Now that's a great ball. Incredible ball. Chance! Oh, what a miss! Max Waters, what was that? Oh my God, what a big moment this was. I was going to say, Kipre led the attack. Oh, how can Bristol City be this open? Long ball. Oh my gosh. I don't even think it's a save by Benny. I think he just chips it over the goal. Oh my God. No, I think it is a save by Bentley. I think it comes off his shoulder. I didn't even see. I thought he hit it over the goal. What a save by Bentley then. Because, yeah, it's a corner to Cardiff. Bentley did so well there to keep that out then. Because I thought he just hit it over. But Max Walters losing his composure again going forward. Ryan Wintle with the corner. And it's been headed away by Conway. Remain Soyers now. So Bristol City started well, but Cardiff now grown into this. Soyers. Oh. Oh, it's, it's, it's been mucked up completely. Walters. And it's been cleared. Oh, a lack of communication at the back for Bristol City there. I can clearly see that. So they just allowed the ball just to fizz across them and no one decided to get a touch or clear. I think maybe for a fear that it could have been an own goal. But either way, there needs to be more communication than that or a back line. Even I can notice that. Right, throwing for Cardiff. It looks like we're starting to get a bit of um action now in terms of the away team. We're now starting to see what they are uh, capable of doing. Without a doubt, that Max Waters chance was the best chance that Cardiff had. And the ball was a great one. Literally marauded um, Cal Naismith. But Max Waters and any Compton striker would have found a way to get past the goalkeeper. And he didn't. He tried to go for himself. Hits his shoulder and goes over the goal. Just even a chip over Bentley I think would have done it. Or oh, Odalda tries to find a creative ball to Sawyers but doesn't quite do enough there. Wells. What a tackle that is by Kipre there. Sawyers. Not missing, Kipre, missile, just wide of the post. Oh, Cardiff are now putting Bristol City under the pressure now. This is how quickly the game swings. Tactical decisions from each manager now coming into play. Bristol City doing the better there. So, Sawyer's nutmeg Snaysmith and Nick Kipre with a brilliant chance. Oh my gosh. Should hit the target from there. I know you're a defender, but even hitting the target, it definitely either would have been an incredible save by Bentley or it would have been an easy goal. Just like that, now Cardiff are now growing into this game. 
PSC Vlogs, welcome to the stream. He says, tight game, one, this one says, he says, hate to see a draw, but I can see it happening. I hate to say, but I also see it happening too. Would I stream Man United Liverpool? Well, I can't give a straight answer to that, unfortunately, because I think I've got to work late from work today. Uh, tomorrow, sorry. I do want to stream it, but realistically, you've got United Stand, you've got Matt, who undoubtedly be streaming it as well. I What I need to do is stream a game that is big, but not many people do. Head up! Oh, go! Go! Bristol City have scored! Just like that, they've been under the cosh, under the pressure. But Tommy Conway, the inspiration, the youngster, has given the lead to the team in red in this seven-side derby. Literally just right out of nothing. Bristol City take a brilliant run to the left. Cross comes in and it's a great header. Right, let's see what happens here. So Sawyers gives it straight to Atkinson. And Atkinson with the ball to the left-hand side. Naki Wells. What a cross that is. And perfect. Absolutely perfect. Colway gets the perfect header. We've been waiting for that perfect cross. Naki Wells has delivered it. Brilliant run from Conway to get ahead of his man. It gets ahead of Jack Simpson, who was substituted onto the pitch. So Jack Simpson undoubtedly probably would be having, well, not most of the blame, but eyebrow, well, eyes will be on him because he was supposed to be marking Conway there. Gets ahead of him. Great header. And also can't reach it. What a moment for the youngster. Tommy Conway, his second goal of the season. He also scored, I think, one goal against Luton. This is a big, big moment for the youngster. Ellis says yes, because he's not supporting Cardiff. Can't believe I celebrated Brentford's counter-attack against Manchester United. I tell you what, I watched it live. And I've got to say, I was really disappointed with the reaction from the United um, fans. They were saying it was a long hooped ball and that's all they had to do to score. You've got to say, the hooped ball, yes, it's a bit, you know, Sunday league-like, but... The pass that was made to find Brian in Bumo was incredible. It was incredible because we did have a couple of defenders starting to catch up with him. But the pass takes it away from the defender, curves it perfectly to Brian and Bumo, who then now sets off and then he gets the goal. You know, so a bit of disrespect in that fourth goal there. Undoubtedly in the first three goals, definitely very fluky ones, I would say. Um, two against Coventry in the camera for Conway there. Oh, he also scored two against him in the camera. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they did beat um, Coventry by four goals to one as well. But we've got to remember this. Coven uh, not Coventry. Bristol City have dropped the most points from winning positions this season and also since uh, 2021 as well. So Bristol City have got to be very wary of that. They've got to try and get something resolved about that. And why is someone hoovering already? Right, so we've got a free kick for Bristol City. I predicted 2-1, so that'll give me one point so far. Cross comes in. Oh! oh! <laughs> Andy Vyman. Wow. What an incredible shot and chance that was. So it was, it was a simple chance. It was just a free kick ahead of all of Cardiff's back line. Andy Vyman gets the half volley. It smacks in the underside of the crossbar and bounces out of the goal. That would have been an incredible goal by Andy Vyman. But it's no goal. And they had Bristol City gone 2-0 at half time. This would have been a brilliant moment for him to score there. I don't think Andy Vyman could believe it. He couldn't believe how close that chance was. Alex Scott with the corner. Oh, another corner. This time defended by Rena Motta. There's been nine votes for the poll. Bristol City, Cardiff win and draw. If you guys have not voted on the poll already, please do so. I probably would vote for Bristol City win. Not because they're currently winning now. But that was my score prediction that I made on Wednesday, actually. Hope he ends 2-1 for the Cardiff with prediction league there. Well, it, that, that can still happen. Cardiff can produce a comeback. And with Bristol City dropping points from winning positions, that might be a realistic prediction. Here is Hanno and Masengo, Alex Scott, Jay De Silva, Joe Williams, 
where no one's there. I, Joe Williams has been quite disappointing for me so far, and out of all the players that I've seen. He had that chance where he miskicked the ball. He's had a couple of deliveries where he's just not found a Bristol City player. Personally, I, I mean, I don't know. If it's I don't think it's just Joe Williams not being good enough. I just don't think he necessarily fits in what kind of Bristol City are doing at the moment. I, I saw him much more... And um, better at a more advanced position in this midfield position that he played um, when he was in uh, Wigan. He has to play a little bit more deep this time because, you know, they've got Andy Varman who plays in that position. And, you know, when you've got someone as prolific as Andy Varman, you know, there's no negotiations about it. He will be in that position. Now, oh, Ben. Here's Cardiff on the ball. Free kick one for Cardiff. We have got six minutes of added time. Did I not say six? I think I actually did say six minutes of added time. So, we've got six minutes to wait before half time. And by that time, we'll start going through stats and all of that stuff. And there, yeah, that's pretty much all we need to cover, really. Bristol City Cardiff, the last game of this championship weekend. Here's Shea Ojo. Up against Zach Viner, but free kick one for Cardiff. And Zach Viner is not happy with that decision at all. So that's a free kick in a pretty dangerous position for Cardiff, actually. It's in the right-hand side, so definitely a chance for them to whip in the set piece. And, you know, we'll be able to see if um, Bristol City are able to defend those kinds of set pieces there. Uh, let's just quickly check more comments. I think, I think I'm actually up to date with comments at the moment. It's actually been a pretty quiet stream at the moment, actually. Apparently, I've only got two viewers watching. Wow. Okay, free kick awarded for Bristol City. Oh, Cardiff, sorry. Come on. O'Dowda heading it away by Viner. And Wells has booted it away. And Romeo passes it back to Allsop. Conway trying to put him under pressure there. Romeo. Or Romeo, Romeo, Romeo. Romeo, I'm going to call him, actually. I keep calling him Romeo from... Um, Southampton there, that's why I keep calling him. Okay. Here's Joe Williams. That's a good ball to find Vyman. But Perry and G manages to get the better of him, actually. Prone to Cardiff. They've got four minutes just before half time. I'm actually going to end the poll here because I always get frustrated when I can't see comments when the poll's in the way. So, Bristol City just edge out. Only 9% said draw, which surprised me a little bit, actually, to be honest. That's a creative ball. Canamo Dowda getting a lot of boos. Here's Perry NG. Sawyers. Ryan Wintle. Back to O'Dowda with the ball. Oh, what a moment! He's your side. It's offside. Oh my god. Cardiff fans still celebrating in the stands. It's offside. Wow, so close. Oh, Morrison was checking the monitor there. I want to check this. So, yeah, offside. Yeah, it is offside, unfortunately, for Shea there. Created ball by Calamo Dowd, and I tell you what, he definitely would not have got a great reception if it was a goal given, but... Shea Ojo, unfortunately, in an offside position. It's still 1-0 Bristol City just before half-time. So, both Bristol City and Cardiff have had one goal disallowed each. Is that going to be the difference for it being my 2-1 prediction? Who knows? Daniel Bentley's taking this goal kick. Four minutes of the six minutes of added time now being played. So, we have to wait for the 51st minute for half-time. Throw in for Bristol City. Chat's gone very, very quiet actually since then. But um, this has been, I, I would dare say, been a much better game than I did expect. You know, I did expect it to be a little bit more um, scrappy, which it has at times. But I didn't expect as many chances as we've had here. You know, Cardiff have had chances, Bristol City have had chances. It's been a relatively enjoyable game to watch, actually. Viner, he does get ahead there and gets a good clearance. 
Oh, now, Kipre, can he win the battle there with Vyman? He does. And great defending. Ryan Winter's going to be quite careful there because he did get the ball straight to Naki Wells. Ryan Wintle back with the ball. Right, final minute before half time. Romeo now with the ball. He, that's a good ball. Max Waters there. But gives the ball straight to Jada Silva. I tell you what, I mean, it's great defending, but I do think. Oh, no foul given by the referee, which has not gone down well for Card um, Bristol City fans there. Shea Ojo. Here's now Cedric Kipre now. Final 15 seconds here. Hanno and Masenga doing very well. This could be a chance. It's three versus two. He's got some options. Oh, it looks like I'd have a retreat back enough though. Here's Conway. Oh, a bit of indecisiveness there. But Cardiff have retreated back in numbers very quickly. A very small opening for um, Bristol City again. Oh, that could have been an opportunity wasted there. Referee looks at his watch, whistles in his mouth. And he blows for half time. 1-0 Bristol City at half time. I tell you what, both teams have had chances and both probably should have at least got one goal within them. Both have had one goal disallowed. It's been a really enjoyable game. But it is Bristol City who currently take the lead in the seventh side derby. A brilliant goal by Tommy Conway and a great cross by Naki Wells. Gets ahead of Jack Simpson to win the header. And that is the difference we have between these two teams. Let me know of your reaction to this game so far in the comments. Since it's been a rather quiet chat for today, I'll do a lot of the leading. Let's actually go to some stats. Because that's always a really, really good place to start, especially at half time. 1 0 Bristol City. As you can see, Bristol City had this spell, but then Cardiff started to really, really try and take over there. That tiny spike for Bristol City was actually their goal. Because when they scored, this was like halfway, you know, when Cardiff had their biggest form. These two spikes must have been the two disallowed, well, for, for one disallowed goal, and that must have been um, Bristol City's disallowed goal, that big one there. So, the only year the colours go to Hanno and Masengo, it doesn't really surprise me because he's done a lot, Hanno and Masengo, in trying to win the, um, trying to win the second ball, really. Naki Wells, as I said, with the cross, Conway getting ahead of Simpson. Look at that, 6.4 rating, not great. Perry G with a 6.3. Rina Motto with a 6.1. Max Waters, 6.3. O'Dowda and Romeo think should get higher than that. I think Kipre deserves man of the match in the moment. And Soyuz deserves a bit more than that. Conway with the only player, actually, in the whole 22 players to get um, a 7 rating. I'm surprised Bentley's not been given one because he's made some good saves so far, Bentley. Bit unfair for Allsop to get a 6.4 for me. Um, in terms of substitutes, what should teams do here? I would expect Kane Wilson to make an appearance at some point. Chris Martin really should make an appearance as well. And um, maybe Tim Close and Cameron Pring to go on near the end if Bristol City are trying to defend a lead. For Cardiff, Vinogin Bidace and Cole Will for me should go on the pitch. And in terms of another striker they've got, pff, what do they have? Mark Harris, etc. to go up front. They've not really got a striker, and I do think that's what they're lacking, Cardiff, at the moment. They need to, you know, they've made all these signings, but a striker has been the area that they've not really looked at, and it could go to cost them at this rate. Possession wise, 49 to 51% for Cardiff. Got five shots to two for Bristol City's favour. Two shots to one on target. Both have had one disallowed goal, of course. Three shots off target to one there. Zero blocked shots, which tells me defensively when it comes to um, defending chances. Both teams have not done necessarily so well with that so far. Two big chances for Bristol City and one for Cardiff. And both have missed those big chances as well. So, that two big chances for Bristol City would have been the Tom Conway chance and Andy Vyman having pretty much an open goal but then volleying it over the bar. For Cardiff, their big chance would have been Max Waters going one-on-one -on -one with the brilliant ball by Cedric Kipre, but hitting it straight at Bentley, forcing a corner. 
Cardiff have hit the woodwork twice. Yes, yeah, so they hit the woodwork definitely when um, I think it was Sawyers or Shea Joe who having that chance. And, yeah, it was Sawyers who had that chance uh, in the right-hand side. And then the other time they hit the bar, maybe it kind of skimmed the bar when Max Waters had that chance. I can't remember the second time they hit the bar. And then Bristol City hitting the woodwork. That was Andy Vyman's incredible opportunity where he had the half volley, a free kick taken. It was an incredible strike with great technique. But hits the underside of the uh, the bar, but unfortunately doesn't bounce into the net. Shots inside the box, four shots to two. One shot uh, outside the box for Bristol City there. One save each. Very close on the passes. In fact, there's only a seven pass difference there. 67% to 69% of accurate passes there. Accuracy-wise, is very close there. And crosses has been an area that both have struggled. But this 17% accuracy in crosses is what caused Bristol City to get their goal. So crosses are very, very important. Um, same around amount about of dribbles, honestly. 80 to 88 possession lost. Jules won 24, so Bristol City working very well off the ball. Five tackles to four, 12 clearances. So defensively doing a stellar job so far. Dean Holden, Sol Bambo, Michelle Owen commentating or doing the punditry for this game here. Bristol City currently with this win are seventh place, only one point off top six. Cardiff fall down to tenth place, which is not terrible for them, but you know they would be um dropping down a couple of places due to that. So that is the current table so far, based on those circumstances there. Bristol City just outside of the top six. Cardiff falling just a little bit lower down the table. 1-0 to the red half of the seven-side derby. Charlie's looking at Leeds and Chelsea. Hash Man says Bristol City's got this. I think so too, but I am very wary that they are very capable of dropping points from winning positions. And that is one area I'm still... A bit unsure about with Bristol City in general but at the moment they've done okay actually they've actually done okay they have had one spell where Cardiff looked quite dangerous but as a whole I do think Bristol City slightly deserve this lead I would definitely say if Cardiff continue as they were actually um, near the end of that half then maybe a draw would be a fair result but oh that was a great chance I just saw that uh, Vyman chance again Incredible, honestly. The technique to get that is incredible and very unlucky for his part that that wasn't a goal. Why are people shouting whilst I'm streaming? That's like they don't know that I, that they can get hear, heard as well. I was thinking a draw for sure or 2-1. It has been a really enjoyable game to watch, Hashman. And you know what? I really do agree with that, actually. I was a bit nervous doing this seven-side derby as a stream because typically the last couple I've seen have been very, not dull, but very scrappy, which this one has been kind of scrappy, but in a way it's still creating many chances. And normally we, I mean, I remember Cardiff winning 1-0 against um, Bristol City away from home in this actual game last year with them only having one shot on target near the start and then they pretty much defended for their lives. At the moment, I'm not seeing any team sitting back trying to defend for their lives. Both teams are going for it. And that is really encouraging for this game going forward. I would hope that Nigel Pearson doesn't say, you know what, we've got the goal. Let's just make sure we don't concede again. I think Bristol City are capable of scoring another goal as well. So, oh, so sorry. So, they beat Luton, for instance, in their last game 2-0. So, they are capable, Bristol City, from building from a one-goal lead and going into 2-0. It's just making sure that they still are defensively good enough right now. And I think the one thing about this Cardiff team does have is that it does have capabilities of getting goals. Not necessarily from their strikers, but they do have enough quality players to chip in with a goal. Yeah, so I was yeah I was completely talking about the right game. The same game from last year, Bristol City in 20 shots. But Cardiff only having um one, you know, winning one nil, which those even those twenty shots didn't even have a lot of quality within them. I'd rather have seen both teams go for this game and go for a load of chances each, really, to be honest there. 
Uh, yeah, so I'm just checking some things. There we go. Right. Uh, let's just quickly do a quick plug for the channel. Thank you guys already for the support. We're on 18 likes, actually. Am I keeping my mind? No, I've not. Okay, so guys, thank you for the watching, by the way. We're on 18 likes at the moment. 12 away from 30, which would be a great achievement for this channel. So thank you guys, as always, for supporting this channel. If you guys have not hit the subscribe button either, it also really helps as well. We're on 1332 at the moment. So currently one away from 1333, which will be hot, well a third of the way between 1,000 and 2,000 subs. So guys, if you have not hit the subscribe button yet, please do so. It does really help the growth of this channel. Now, I'm going to quickly go to the Premier League for Sofa Store because I think we've just announced the teams for Leeds, Chelsea and West Ham and Brighton. There we go. So this is what Leeds are lining up against Chelsea. They have, oh, what's happened here? Come on. They've got Melier, they've got Strojic, um, Lorente, Cook, Christensen, Mark Roker, Tyler Adams, Jack Harrison, Aronson, Dan James, and Rodrigo as captain. I've not seen Chelsea's team yet. Let's see. So, Mendy in goal, Thiago Silva, Koulibaly, Reese James, Loftus Cheek, Connor Gallagher starting. Now, that's interesting. Jorginho with Cucurella in the left-hand side, Mason Mount and Sterling and Havertz. So it's pretty much been the same front three, which I've still been a bit touch and go with. But I'm happy with Reese James and Kudabali and Silva staying in that team. Cucurella, Loftus cheap playing in that position there. Now that is very interesting. So no Azpilicueta there. Bench, we've got Chalaba, Azpilicueta is on the bench, and Padu. Chukwemeka, we've got, uh, who was one of our newest signings. Chilwell's on the bench, and that surprises me, actually. hudson Adoy, Ziyech, and Pulisic. Missing players, of course, we've had Kovacic and Kante injured uh, from the last game. And Alonso's out as well, according to an injury, but he has been heavily linked with Barcelona at the moment. He may be involved in our um, Aubameyang deal. Clayson, Drame, um, Click... For sure, Sinistera, uh, Sinistera, Sam Greenwood, Somerville, and Gilhart on the bench. Ailing Dallas, Furpo, Bamford, Cooper, and well, Gilhart apparently doubtful, but he is on the bench actually. So, this team definitely not full strength for Leeds, but it's definitely the best I think they could have done with the players they've got available. Let's look at West Ham and Brighton's teams. Babianski in goal, Cresswell. Oh, their brand new signing, Theo Kera from, um, oh, where, where did they get him from? He's from Bundesliga, I believe. Kurt Zuma is playing with Kufal. Suchek, Rice, and Four Nows in the midfield three. Side Ben Rama, Mikhail Antonio, and Jared Bowen also playing. That's a really good team for West Ham. But they've not beaten Brighton um, so far. Arigato with a 5.7 rating. Jesus. Ogbona, Ashby, Ben Johnson, Coventry. Lanzini, Flynn Downs, Maxwell Corne and Skamaka all on the bench. I really want to see Corne, Skamaka and Flynn Downs play. I actually think all three of them can offer something good for them. Ogbonna, doubtful, but I don't even think that's down to an injury. I think that's potentially him getting a move away. Dawson definitely has an injury, so I know about that. And Agard also with an injury. Here's Brighton's team. We've got Robert Sanchez with Webster, Lewis Dunk, Joel Veltman. Got Sonny Marsh, McAllister, Caicedo, Trossard, Lalana, Pascal Gross, and Danny Welbeck. Definitely a very strong Brighton team. You've got Lamptey on the bench with Colwell, Estupinian. That's definitely going to be not the Estupinian from Hull, maybe siblings potentially. Um, Alzate, uh, Mitoma, Mwepo, um, Mwepu, sorry. Neil Morpe, who's not actually made any minutes so far. He has been linked to Nautica Forest, Neil Morpe. And Jacob Moder is currently injured. So these are your four teams that are just about to play in the next hour or so. Let me know of your reaction to those teams in the comments as well. Oh, it's for PSG. Oh, of course he is. No, he's um I don't know. I don't know why I thought he was German. I think he's from Belgium actually. Uh I think I've already caught up with everything there. I'd like that Steve Morrison always has to check the monitor if there's been a goal disallowed on his front there. But he was definitely offside. I even, I can even even see it from being an armchair warrior. 
Oh, so not all of the Carabao Cup round two games have been played yet because we've got Bolton, Aston Villa. Uh, oh no, round two is a brand new round in this competition. I was just going to say, I was talking about round one. Colchester are playing Brentford, if I remember right, at the, um, the Job Serve Community Stadium as well. Oh, he is German. Ah, but playing PSG, right. So got the wrong league, but got the right nationality, I guess. We've got about five minutes just before um, the second half starts. I'm hoping it's going to be as good as the first half. Guys, I think we've just hit our achievement in subs today. Thank you so much. So we have made it to 1333. We're officially a third of the way through from 1,000 to 2,000. Guys, you guys have been absolutely smashing it today. Thank you guys so much for the constant support for this channel. So this game's still sticking with 1-0. Only one yellow card, which surprises me as well. With it being a derby, I thought it might be a bit more fierce than that. There has been a quite a lot of breaks in play. You know, we had an early uh, substitution with Joe Bacon going off and Jack Simpson going on the pitch. Has there been any subs from any teams going into the second half? For what I can see, I've not seen any. So to remind you what I would do, I mean, considering if we've got five subs. Uh, okay, so kind of about to kick off. It looks like Soros is going to kick off there. Martin Wilson definitely need to go on for me. I think Tim Close and Pring will be brought on later. For Cardiff, I would say um, uh, Phil Adrian Bidday's definitely Mark Harris should go on and Cole Will and Rawls, I think, should go on as well. Right, need to get um, the timer working right about now because Cardiff are just about to kick off. Just caught it, just in time. Wow, that was very close. Uh, okay, I'm a couple of seconds behind, but yeah, it, it will do. Two seconds behind, I can make do with that. Second half started, now back to have these commentating headphones on. Right. Marlon Romeo with Rina Motta, which Sawyers tries to find OJ, but it's good defending. So, here's Jack Simpson, which you could arguably say was at a small fall for their goal. He was supposed to be marking Conway, but Conway does get ahead of him, outmuscles him, and wins the header. Now here comes Cardiff. They are starting slightly better at the moment. Shea Joan, left hand side, gets ahead of Alex Scott. Wanted a penalty, but not given. It's going to be a Cardiff corner in the opening 50 seconds of its second half. Yeah, I have noticed Gamak has joined indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he score his first goal? I believe in the Conference League, he scored his first goals, um, or goal at least. For West Ham. They're in the qualifying stage, I guess, for um, West Ham there. Right, Cross comes in. And I think another corner for Cardiff. Okay. Another corner coming in. Good defending by Andy Varman this time. Wintle again with the corner. Header. Not quite cleared. Headed back down. And it's defended, but it's given straight back to Ryan Wintel. Romeo. Now Romain Sawyer's on the ball. He's going to pass it back to Ryan Wintel. That's a great ball. What a ball to come, O'Dowder. No one was there to receive it. And he actually kept it in play as well. That's disappointing for Cardiff's perspective. Just They just watched. Um, they only just watched um, O'Dowder win the ball there. Had they gone to the boss, that would have been a great chance. And now here comes Andy Vyman. He's right by himself there. Cross comes in. Charles. Oh, side netting. I thought it was a goal. Jada Silva. What a miss. Just like that. Bristol City go to the other end of the pitch on the counter-attack. It was a quick free kick. Oh, could have been offside there. But would have been given anyway. So Vyman with the cross. The... Jada Silva with a clean strike. No one marking him. Had he hit the ball on target, that'd be 2-0 and maybe game over. Wrong option. I think he took it on his um, weaker foot actually as well. God, that's a big chance for... Big chances falling for both teams right now. It looks like it's a throw-in. Oh no, it's been kept in well by Jada Silva. Max Waters struggling a little bit. Goal kick's been awarded. So Perry and G wins it back. But now it's pinballing around the centre circle. 
Rina Motta, Whip getting ahead of Hanno Mazzengo there. Kipre, back to Rina Motta. Bit of quick football there. Ryan Wintle again with a creative ball. But Alex Scott does well to defend it. Goal kick. And, oh, it's one. Like I of there. Here's Ryan Wintle. Romeo. They're showing the teams again for Bristol City and Cardiff, which we've already shown many times already. If any of you want to see the teams and you've not been there, do let me know because I'll definitely show them. Right, here's Dan Bentley with the ball. Pass back to Romeo. Oh, okay, Kipre, sorry, in the right-hand side. Here's Ryan Wintle, closed down a bit, but he does well, actually, to keep his composure. Also, again... He's got to be quite careful there at the moment. And clock's just ticking away so far. Jack Simpson now on the ball. Ojo, who gets tackled by Viner. Here's Alex Scott, not being given as a foul there. Williams, Conway now on the ball. He's got a couple of options, but it's been tackled by Ojo. But there's one back by Joe Williams there. Viner with the shot over the goal. Bit disappointing there. Both teams looking like they've got their moments. But both teams not taking their chances at the moment. We've had four minutes and two meaningful attacks from both there. But how is no Cardiff player in that box? They can't rely on Callum Modaldo to do it by himself. I'm looking at that chance again. It's an exquisite pass by Wintle. But no Brit Cardiff player is in the box to try and receive the ball of him. He can't do it by himself. He's been their biggest goal contributor. But... You know, you can't put all the pressure on him. This is when I expect to see Waters and Ojo in the box, but none of them were there to be seen. Joe Williams with some great defending. Atkinson. Header with Naki Wells. Tom Conway now against Cedric Kipre. Oh, free kick given to Bristol City just outside the box. Definitely a penalisable foul by Cedric Kipre there. So free kick from, I would say, probably just over 20 yards out. Got a little bit of a break in play now. Comments have been really quiet today, actually. But in a way, you know, whilst that may mean that I don't interact with you guys as much, it means I just have time to watch this game. And honestly, I've actually really enjoyed this game, actually. In a weird way, I've actually have quite enjoyed this one. Naki Wells, looks like he may take the free kick. You've got Nato also stepping over it. Wells takes it, goes for shot, lack of height. It's straightable. Cross comes in from him, headed away. Williams, deflection wide. And it's a corner to Bristol City. Cool, that, was a, that was definitely the strike that Williams was trying to do in the first half when he missed it. He gets the strike this time, a very clean strike from, Wintle, um, from Williams there. Call it, take a shot. Masengo deflects. Chance just over from Atkinson. Bristol City getting some chances now. I tell you what, Masengo did have some space. Look at his space he had there. But once again, lacking the height and it's just blocked by the Cardiff back line where it's lacking some structure, that Cardiff back line right now. And as it stands, it would be two away defeats in a row for... No, three away defeats in a row for Cardiff there. Mark Harris looks like he's about to go on to the pitch. They definitely... Well, Cardiff need changes right now. They need to chase this game and get something. At the moment, Bristol City looking more likely to score at the moment based on the possession, based on the chances as well in the second half so far. O'Dowd has been the only one with any touches in Bristol City's box in this half so far. No one else from Cardiff, have, I think, have been allergic to going into Bristol City's box right now. They really need to try and overload that back line. And O'Dowd tries to win the header against Viner. Doesn't do so so successfully there. Although there's Wintle in the boys. Played a big part in this game so far, Ryan Wintle. And 
It's a free kick to Bristol City. And I've got to say, Tommy Conway did really well to win that, actually. He's even won the free kick for his team as well. Just running for the ball. He does really, really well there, Tom Conway. Did get a bit of a knock on his head, which I hope he's okay. But he looks like he is okay to continue on. Maybe could be a small cut. But Lodjan Bidace and Harris are going on to the pitch, which were two substitutions I did suggest Cardiff will make. I'll be intrigued to see um, to see who goes off. Conway, oh, bit of a collision there. Rina Motto and um, Kip Ray with a small collision there. Conway's in a lot of pain right now, but plays continued on. Hanno and Masengo. Oh, interesting. Good play. Masengo in the box. Charles maybe across. Good save. Good save. Oh dear. Had Conway got on his feet quicker, could have reacted to that. That's such a shame, but Conway's still in pain. He is struggling, Conway. He may need to go off here. Broccoli saying, come on, Cardiff. I, I don't know if it's him being a Cardiff fan or for predictions league purposes. At the moment, in terms of predictions league, I would get one point for this because I predicted 2-1 Bristol City. Which I think they actually have earned it. What a ball! But, oh, it's good defending by Kipre. And ball's won back by Alex Scott. But Kipre wins it back. But now straight back to um, that there. Oh, Joe Williams. Alex Scott. And it's a corner to... Bristol City. So, uh, 55 minutes in. I'm expecting a double substitution from Cardiff for right about now because it looks like Mark Harris and Jada Philogen Bide are about to go onto the pitch. Looks like referee's talking to Conway to check that he's able to still continue playing there. I was just going to say, there's no Antoine Semenya yet. And I've got to say, Bristol City in that midfield have done really, really well to cope with his absent, ab absence, to be honest. I think uh, for double substitution, I'm going to suggest uh, to replace Ojo and Waters eventually. Conway looks like he is okay for now, but I would keep an eye on him. I don't think... Oh, okay. Bit of handbags at the moment in the box. Corner's about to be taken. Naismith this time with the corner. And it's a poor one. Poor corner. Are they going to make the change now? Or if not yet? They're still waiting. Oh, there we go. There we go. Substitutions are taking place now. So, Mark Harris is going off to replace Max Waters, who's really had a disappointing game again, Max Waters. Since MK Dons, I've not been too convinced with Max Waters, honestly, unfortunately. But Mark Harris on the pitch. You can get a goal here and there. Shay Ojo is going off the pitch. And he's being replaced by Jaden Philogen Bides. Which I think is an interesting substitution again. But Jaden Philogen Bides did get the first... Uh, well, he got the only goal that beat um, Birmingham by one goal to nil. So he has been involved, uh, Bides, with a couple of goals so far. Playing at Cardiff and he was, I don't know if it's a loan deal or permanent. I think it was a loan deal from Aston Villa. Just going to plug the channel. Get Oh, maybe no chance for Conway. Oh, good defending. Soyers, oh, that's a shame. It's Callum O'Dowda, round the ball. Great play. Oh, Soyers giving the ball away, crucially. Can Odalda win it over Jada Silva? No, Jada Silva wins it back. But he gives it straight to Romeo. Romeo! Just wide. Corner, I think, for Cardiff. Because I think it's a block. Both teams have been giving the ball away pretty cheaply, I've got to be honest. Both have been not very um, secure in terms of keeping the ball out from their penalty box. Which I think is going to be a problem for them, both of them. Um, at least going forward if they don't address it. 
With a couple of viewers we have here, I'm just going to say, if you've not liked the stream yet, please do like the stream. It really does help the growth of this channel. It really, really does. Oh, corner comes in. Header. Just over the goal. False alarm. So, yeah, please like the stream. Not done so well. 19 likes, apparently. If we can get to 30, that would be an incredible achievement for this channel. If you've also hit not hit the subscribe button, it also really helps the growth of this channel as well. We are officially a 1333, so we are half, a third of the way actually between uh, 1000 and 2000. So, guys, if you've not hit the subscribe button as well, please do so. And just as a forfeit for me, if I hit 2000 subs, I shave my beard. So, I will be beardless, and Babyface Alex will return when that happens. But thank you guys as always for the constant support. We are 58 minutes in. And doesn't I don't think we're gonna get a huge stoppage time at the moment. Yellow cards being awarded for Viner, I think for time wasting there. Well the the officials it looks like they're trying to get rid of this time wasting. But the thing is, if you award a yellow card, I've not I've not really seen anyone get sent off for two moments of time wasting there. Who is the referee, actually? I've not actually checked. I've not actually checked who the referee is. It is... Thomas Bramble. Don't know what he is. Here's Cameron O'Dowdo with a good chance. He's got some space. It's taking too long. Hello, days Just wide of the post. Oh, that's a huge chance for Cardiff. God, poor decision-making in the final third again for Cardiff. Oh, it's Romeo who does really well, actually, to lead... The oh, God... Oh my gosh, just a delayed, a delayed pass where he really could have either gone by himself or could have even passed it back to Romeo who had some space. Just delay the attack and going way too, being way too cautious this front three for Cardiff and it's costing them at the moment. Headed one and it's going to be a throw for Bristol City. Oh, it's really, really tired. I just noticed that. Conway against Kipre. Vyman with the cross. It's won by Jay De Silva. Han Noah Misengo. Shot! Oh, my God. That's a clean strike by Han Noah Misengo, but just wide off the post. It's Bristol City now going pretty close. Masengo just inside the box. Oh, I thought it was going to hit the side netting, but it doesn't actually hit the side netting. Just wide of the post. Both teams having some chances now. Really, well, I wouldn't say it could go either way, but I'd say it's more likely that Bristol City will get something here. I think they've just edged the first half, Bristol City, but second half's been a bit more competitive, I would dare say. I think Bristol City started it better, but then Cardiff are now... Looking a little bit more in control. Oh, definitely free kick for Cardiff there. Alex Scott conceding the free kick this time. Just to remind you of what the table's looking like as it stands, I'll just show you. So Bristol City will be in seventh place as it stands if it stays like this with two wins, one draw. And two defeats. And it'll be two wins in a row for them as well. Which will see them in a pretty decent position. Cardiff will fall down a couple of places to 10th. As it stands as well. With this being only their second defeat of the season. In fact it's not three defeats in a row. Because I've just noted, I've just remembered Cardiff drew against West Brom away. And, and didn't lose to them there. Here's Hanno and Masengo. Right let's go back to the watch along screen. Uh, okay, Viner on the ball against, oh, oh no, Jay De Silva, sorry, against Odalda. Can Conway win it? Gets a small touch and wins a free kick. I tell you what, it's going to be a yellow card for Kipre. Yep, yellow card given to Cedric Kipre right now. He was on his final warning pretty much. And I believe that's the first yellow card for a Cardiff player actually in this game. So Kipre and Conway, who's just been working so hard to win the ball back. 
and he concedes, an, well, he wins another free kick and it's caused Kipre to get booked. I don't think I've seen as much desire as I have done from Tommy Conway so far. He's playing like you wouldn't believe to try and keep his place in the first team and he really has done an incredible job. I'll tell you what, we've had like our nominations for Young Player of the Year. Tommy Conway could be one that might be up there. I think is it is that Naismith taking the free kick? I think it is Naismith taking the set piece there. Okay, this could be a good chance. Free kick, header, goal! Game over, it's 2-0. Atkinson with the goal, 2-0 to Bristol City. Surely now it is all three points going to Bristol City. Just like that. Rob Atkinson with the goal as well. Free kick, well, free kick delivered by one centre-back in Cal Naismith. Connected by the other centre-back partner, Rob Atkinson, to make it 2-0. Gorgeous delivery. Now, is he? No, Rob Atkinson definitely not offside. A couple of players are, but he gets ahead of Cedric Kipre, actually, who was one who conceded that free kick in the first place. Powerful header. Also can't save it with his feet. 2-0 Bristol City. And surely it is game over now. Gorgeous free kick actually. Diving header by Rob Atkinson. 2-0 to Bristol City. Second consecutive game they've been 2-0 up actually. And as it stands I'll remind you guys what that means for the championship table. Bristol City are just outside of the top six now. Seventh place with seven points. This is how quickly your season can change if you get a little bit of consistency. Bristol City, before midweek, were right in the relegation zone with only one point in their opening uh, three, if I can count. Yeah, and now with two wins in a row, with seven points, they're looking like they could really close the gap to top six now. Only one point off Hull City. Cardiff Following that, their goal difference has now worsened. They have fallen from 10th to 12th. And that is how tight this section of the table is officially. Now, this could be a chance again. Alex Scott. It's blocked. And it's a throw into Bristol City. I think they've earned this. Honestly, Bristol City going forward have looked really, really good going forward. Max says 2-0. Double exclamation mark. Yeah, that's right. And honestly, I think they've earned it as well. Cardiff have had spells... But Bristol City going forward look much, much better. Much better. In terms of the only forward player I've seen for um, Cardiff, it's really been Odalda in this second half, to be honest. First half, um, Max Waters had that huge chance where he was put one-on-one -on -one and Bentley saved with his shoulder. And that was a really disappointing moment for him. Had he just chipped it over him and that would have you know, made Cardiff have the... Well, that's a gorgeous ball. Chance! That's a, oh my gosh, I was missed! It's still alive. Oh my gosh. I don't know how Cardiff have not scored this. I was just talking about Odalda being the only one involved going forward. Finally, other people actually have contributed to this. It's a gorgeous ball. But I think it's good goalkeeping by Bentley. It was against House. This is another chance. Another save again by Bentley. Cardiff are now starting to try and get something here in the 66th minute. Throw in for Cardiff. That has been a mad couple of minutes there. What a response that would have been. Romeo with the ball. Headed away. It's one back by Perry and G. Cross comes in. Headed away. Bristol City now just kind of making sure that they keep this clean sheet now. Hashman says he knew they were going to win. But it's not over yet. We've still got 23 minutes and stoppage time left to play. Anything can still happen. I predicted 2-1 for this game, actually. So a Cardiff goal would be really handy for my predictions league um, status at the moment. But it does look like I'll get at least one point regardless. And I've got to say, I always want the team that actually deserves it to win as well. And it does look like, to me, Bristol City have deserved this at the moment. I've got to say, Conway I've been really impressed with. He was the one that won the free kick that caused the second goal. His work rate off the ball has been second to none. I'm very surprised that not many of us content creators were considering Conway potentially being the young player of the year because he's done so well recently to even score for Bristol City in their last game against Cardiff. 
Matt would know about it because he scored twice against uh, Coventry in the Cowbell Cup game as well. And right now, he is playing like his team, placing a team depends on it. And you've got to remember, Bristol City are without Antoine Semenyo, you know, a first teamer in that advanced midfield position. And Conway's done a stellar, stellar job to actually keep that place and to keep out some very stiff competition. You know, Conway's in the striker's position. You would typically see Chris Martin, normally quite reliable in the championship, but his performances have kept him out. And you've got to say, I think having that competition has really upped his... Um, standards his own standards to make sure that he performs to the best of his ability and i am seeing that every time that he's just running with all of his energy and his mind and his strength and determination to get the ball and i think that's definitely been given a, a really good edge for um bristol city as well as a team as well making sure that they have those same standards too joe walls has just gone on the pitch by the way i did almost didn't notice him being subbed on actually so Joe Wall says replace remain size. In fact, there was, there was another double substitution, which I did notice because Ruben Colwell was involved in the attack um, that um, Cardiff missed just recently. Colwell and uh, Rules are on, which were the other four uh, two players I said should go onto the pitch, but I didn't expect it to be Soyers and Rina Motta being replaced. Or Jack Simpson and Kip Prey having a bit of a... Oh, having a bit of a um, lack of communication, but they do clear it. We are literally approaching the 70th minute. Another long ball. Can Vyman keep it in? No. He boots it to the crowd. It is going to be a goal kick for Cardiff. I've only just remembered. It's Nigel Pearson's birthday, isn't it? What a birthday treat this is turning out to be for Nigel Pearson so far. So goal kick's been taken. Cardiff just kind of playing out from the back at the moment. And Perry and G on the ball. Long ball, interesting. Oh, it's a poor one. <laughs> Doesn't find a single Cardiff player. It's a Bristol City throw in. We do got to make sure that um, for Bristol City's sake that they keep this lead. We've just officially passed 1333. We're on 1334. Thank you to whoever's just subscribed. Thank you so much. We have gained four subs today, which was much better from the stream from yesterday. So, guys, thank you so much, as always, for the constant support for the channel. It really, really does help the growth of this channel when you do that. We've hit, hit 20 likes as well. So, guys, our target's 30 likes. So, guys, if you've not liked the stream yet, please do hit the like button. It really, really does help the growth of this channel. What's happened to my webcam? Don't do this now. There we go. I don't know what happens to I don't know why my webcam decides not to work at times. Right. That was a definitely a good challenge there. Here's Naki Wells on the left hand side. Could be game over this. Goes for a shot. Blocked by Ryan Winter as another corner for Bristol City. I tell you what, that was a great, great play by Joe Williams there. And then it was Naki Wells on the left-hand side against Kit Prey. He goes by himself and Wintour gets the block. And that is a corner to Bristol City again. Let's look at stats, I'd say. I think that will be a good type of stats. Let's just wait for this corner first. Corner. Can't edit away. And it's been in the water for free kick to Cardiff. Right, okay, let's look at stats because now's a good time to check. So, as you can see, because obviously, I mean, we've got to remember Bristol City there and Cardiff in that way as well. So, 52% to Cardiff, 48% to Bristol City. But look at that difference there 14 shots to six, three shots to their one on target, which was that Max Waters chance. Seven shots to three there. Oh, hang on a minute. Colwell, good defending. Joe Balls, potentially creating something. Colwell with the ball. Defended by Jada Silva. Romeo tries to go down, no penalty awarded. Six corners to eight. Oh, I don't think, yeah, I don't, I really don't think it's a pen, to be honest. Two yellow cards to one, four big chances to one, 
Three of them missed from Bristol City, which is incredible. Cardiff have hit the woodwork twice. It has been a pretty lively game, in all honesty. So, I really pleasantly enjoyed this game, actually. I've really, really enjoyed it, honestly. Alex Scott, he went to free kick for Cardiff City. Very Cardiff players looking very frustrated now. With 73 minutes in, 17 minutes plus stoppage time left. Nah, 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 nah. Not a pen for me. Definitely not a pen for me. I've seen it back as well. Romeo trying to win that there. Yeah, I mean, Morrison's just done a pathetic slight arm raise like this. No pen. Goes down way too easily for me, for my liking. I'd almost say that was so bad, I'd pick you for diving, to be honest, uh, Romeo. So I wouldn't do that again if I was referee. Alex Scott taking the throw in. Lackey Wells receiving it. And here's Alex Scott again, who's played everywhere, I'd swear. He's almost like covered the whole length of the pitch. The youngster's doing a great job. Conway making a small mistake there. Right, is Ryan Wintle? Ryan Wintle, I mean, I think he's done quite well, Ryan Wintle, for Cardiff, I've got to be honest. Perry and G on the left-hand side. He's kind of taking the place of Joe Bagan's position, with Jack Simpson taking place of his position there, if that makes any sense to you. Oh, Vine's done very well to keep the ball in the pitch there. Hanno Masengo now against Colwell. Colwell fouls him. Is that going to be a yellow? Yep, yellow card. I, yep, yellow card awarded to Ruben Colwell now. Charlie, if you've calculated all the predictions already, fair play to you. I, I'm really impressed if you have done that. Cheers for that. I have got all the predictions saved anyway. Just to double check, have we, have you, do I dare say, have you also dealt with um, Ethan's one as well? Obviously, when we've had to watch the video to make sure that we know what we're predicting as well. I trust Ethan that he's done it properly, but it's just double checking that he's definitely said those predictions before the game um, has started, if that makes sense. Right. Oh, great header. Uh, okay. Now, Colwell, a bit of pace for Philogene here. He's got a bit of um, pace right there. Oh, shot for Philogene just wide of the post. That is literally what I've needed to see him do more of. Just running with that pace and that space that he's got. But right now, he's just he's not even hitting the goal right now. Oh, that's such a shame. Dang. I mean, 2-1 would be great for my predictions, but I feel like Bristol City should definitely at least win this game. I definitely think Bristol City have earned this. Based on their performances. Who got the second? It was Rob Atkinson from a free kick. From Well, he didn't take the free kick. It was Cal Naismith. Tommy Conway uh, won a free kick from Cedric Kipre, uh, who Where he got a yellow card from that. Free kick came in from Naismith over the whole back line. Rob Atkinson running in an onside position against Kipre. Diving header. And also can't save it. Making it 2-0. Right, here's Naki Wells. Can he get off away from Kipre? Chance! Surely! That's goal! Surely! Offside again! Another disallowed goal for Bristol City. Another offside goal. Andy Vyman this time now denied. Great communication between Naki Wells and Andy Vyman. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a clear off, it's clearly offside. But, wow. I was going to say... If it was 3-0, that would be more than game over indeed. So Cardiff again, slightly get away with that there. They've had two goals disallowed for them. But they are still 2-0 down with 13 minutes. Oh, that's a good ball. Oh, that's a great ball actually. But Ryan also does well to retrieve it. God, Bristol City look really dangerous going forward. And that I think has been a difference. Their threat going forward has looked 10 times better than Cardiff's. And can he can they keep the ball alive, Cardiff? No. Bristol City even do better to even keep the ball in play. Joe Williams to handle Masingo. Oh, definitely going to be 
a free kick for Bristol City. Oh, not for, um, yeah, for Bristol City. Don't think Joe Wolves is actually going to be given a yellow card for that, actually, which I'm a bit surprised about. Now, it looks like we've got another substitution. Well, Tommy Conway is going off and he's having a huge round of applause. One goal for him and he won the free kick to get the second goal. He's had a brilliant performance, young Tommy Conway. They're going to look at the goal again. Naki Wells cross. Perfection. What a header. To get that goal just before half-time too. What a moment for the youngster. He's off the pitch and experienced Chris Martin is coming onto the pitch with only 12 minutes left to play. Wow. So, 79th minute now. Still 2-0. Free kick awarded to Bristol City, but headed away. We're still in the centre of the pitch here. Colwell's going to try and win that. Tries to get a good ball, but Cal Naismith defends it. At concern. Oh, gives it straight to Odalda here. Colwell now on the ball. This could be a chance. Romeo. Deflection. And it's straight is trying to claim the handball, but nothing given against uh, Bristol City there. It was a huge deflection. So Atkinson giving the ball straight to Odalda. Gives it to Colwell. Now Romeo. Uh, oh. I don't know, to be honest. It wasn't clear enough for me. Goal kick. And it's won by... Oh. It's probably been given. I was very surprised. No free kick was given for Bristol City there. Uh, okay. Oh, that's a free kick awarded for Cardiff there. Oh, yeah. Joe Williams was definitely not going to allow that to run. And the yellow card's been awarded for Joe Williams. Potentially for interfering the play there because he kicked the ball away. Yeah. So, 80th minute, still 2-0. Guys, if you've not liked the stream yet, please do like the stream. It really does help the growth of this channel. We're on 20 sec uh, 22 likes, actually. So, thank you guys so much. Okay, here's Philogene. Cole Wheel. Oh, what a beautiful bit of defending by Cal Naismith. Suddenly, we're seeing some pace. We're seeing Cardiff players take on the defenders. And Naismith had to really get the last ditch slide tackle to... Get the ball off um, Ruben Colwell there. Here's um, Hanno Masengo. Oh, against Colwell. And goal kick's been given for Bristol City. So just to go on with the... Um, <laughs> just to go on with uh, me... Um, what do you call it? Plugging the channel again. Please do like the stream not done so. It really does help the growth of the channel if you do that. Please also do, if you can, hit the subscribe button as well. It also... Really, really helps the growth of the channel. Tell was one thousand three hundred thirty-four. So, as always, guys, thank you so much for that. One thing I am going to say, and this is something I will say in advance. I don't know how many of you are here. Saturday midday, Sunderland Norwich. Could I make it in time for that? I don't know. With that, oh, I need to think about this carefully here. God. I don't know what I'm doing this week, to be honest, um, in terms of um, streams and videos and stuff like that. I need to plan it actually straight after this game and get a, a strategy formed. Joe Walls. Okay. Here is Ruben Colwell. Shot over the goal. Very poor from Cardiff going forward today. So, Andy King is going on the pitch, replacing Joe Williams. And I think Scott may be, well, Scott's definitely going to be um, looked at. By the way, Leeds, Chelsea and West Ham and Brighton have, are nearly ready to be kicked off. Only 15 minutes time, they will be kicked off as well. Andy King going on to the pitch. Now, I need to see if Alex Scott's all right to carry on. He was down for quite a bit. Let's 
There's a lot of delays going on now with these substitutions there. Romeo is still on the pitch. Okay, looks like a Tete is about to go onto the pitch. And who would he replace right now? So a Tete is going off for Romeo. Interesting. Steve Morrison really needing to chuck as many forward players as he can to get something from this. And right now, that's really all he can do to try and get something here. You know, they've got two goals to try and go back. Bristol City are renowned for giving away leads. But now they've got two goals to try and catch up with. Is it going to be too difficult for them to get back into this? Uh, throw in given for Bristol City right now. Coniston, welcome back. It's been a very quiet um, stream, honestly, actually, in terms of um, comments, actually. It's done a lot better um, statistically um, in terms of likes and subscriptions, but actually, compared to yesterday, there was actually a lot more people talking yesterday, and it was actually not as good statistically. What a great ball this is. Good defending by NG. Headed away. No, not headed away at all. That's poor for Cardiff there. But, the, oh, God, the attacking players of Bristol City just kind of clash into each other. They're getting each other's way. M Hanno and Masengo and Naki Wells get into each other's way and they can't get the ball into the net. Cardiff now really need to go going now. They need to get a goal in the next two minutes or so for me to think that they can get something from this game. Ryan Rintel, Odalda, who's not even being booed anymore because, um, obviously, Bristol City are now looking very, very comfortable now. Clearance by Atkinson, who scored one of the only other goals in this game. Kit Prey with the header, but it's not the greatest. Naki Wells running forward, and he sent Ryan Wintle back to Blackpool. Oh, this is going to be a beautiful goal if this goes in. Martin, he goes down. The referee, well, the referee's not giving a penalty. Oh my gosh, I tell you what, maybe because Romeo's one wasn't given, they're not giving that one. But I felt that one was a stronger case for a penalty. Right, five minutes left and plus stoppage time left. Kind of not looking like they could get something there, but if they need to get something, they really need to start getting a goal right about now. Bristol City, as it stands, will have two home wins in a row. The only other home game that they've lost, actually, was against Sunderland, 3-2, where they also can um, score two goals. But it conceded three. That's a Tete. And it's not a great tis of balls. Atkinson. Good defending there by De Silva. It's a throw in for Bristol City. Let's see this again. So it was it was brilliant teamwork. Ooh. I mean... It's a stronger case than Romeo's one, is all I'll say. But I can definitely understand that these ones don't get given all that often either. It is a pretty close game, I would dare say. But I will say Bristol City have edged it slightly. I think they do deserve um, what they do. Because I do think they're the most dangerous, actually, Bristol City, in terms of their attacking play, at least. Right. <clears throat> Cardiff on the ball. Free kick awarded for Cardiff. 86th minute. It looks like there's another substitution. Kane Wilson, who I did say would go onto the pitch. I think I've actually got all the substitutions spot on in terms of who's going onto the pitch. The only ones I've not got right is um who they're replacing. So Zach Vine, or was it no? I think it's Hanno and Masenga going off actually. Hanno and Masenga off the pitch. Kane Wilson on the pitch. They really, really need to make sure that they get as many defenders as they can for City now to keep this lead. They really cannot afford to drop points from this stage now. Final three minutes plus stoppage time coming up. I'm going to say we're going to get four minutes of added time, if that, because we've not had too many stoppages. Had a couple of stoppages, but nothing too significant. I'll be surprised if we get more than five. So, is all okay. A bit of shirt pulling going on. Tell you what, I've got to be a bit careful because, oh, it's getting feisty now. Tell you what, they've got to be quite careful. I mean, because 
Bristol City are doing the best job to try and... Oh, I saw that. Bristol City are trying to time waste and it's not going down well with the Cardiff players right now. Alex Scott's been booked. And I'm sure, yeah, Cardiff players will get booked as well from that. I think Ryan Wintle's also been booked. The act of time wasting and trying to delay play. It's one of the most common ways to get booked these days now in a normal championship game. Ryan Wintle also gets booked with Alex Scott. 88th minute. Cardiff just trying to hurry things up, but the referee also has to go at his own pace. Clearly delaying the play just to make sure Bristol City can get some bodies into the box to defend this. It's really shit ass tactic, but it actually really does work. Right, Joe Wolves with the free kick. Headed. Corner. No, goal kick. I'm surprised at that. I thought it was a corner. O'Dowder looking like that he got the touch there, but just doesn't direct it anywhere near the goal. We're in the 89th minute, and it looks like it's not going to be Cardiff's day. And it will still be zero goals that Cardiff scored away from home this season as well. So away from home, it could be very, very difficult for them at the moment. Nigel Pearson doing very well at the moment with his team. Getting into seventh place at the moment. Swansea losing a 2-0 lead in injury time inspires Bristol to not do the same. Well, I'd be very shocked if they did because... Well, I mean, to be fair, I feel, feel like Millwall were less in the game for what Cardiff were, but Cardiff going forward are just not looking like that they're going to get a goal, honestly. So I don't see it happening, but Millwall did prove that it is indeed possible. We're now entering the 90th minute. I'm saying four minutes of added time. We have got five minutes. Okay, not quite far away. Five minutes of added time. Now, there's Etete, Cutterwill to Philogene. Oh, it's given away. Here's Chris Martin. Kane Wilson now. But too much of every touch, and it is a goal kick for Cardiff. It's looking very good if you're a Bristol City fan. Just to remind you, Bristol City fans, in case if there's any, a couple of you watching, you are currently sitting seventh place in the league there you are seventh place just below Hull City just ahead of Norwich and goal difference ahead of Preston and Millwall and Blackpool and of now Cardiff on goal difference wow Andy Vyman again running very very well and long ball again hooped forward Naki Wells looking like he's going to beat Perry NG to it but Perry NG does manage to tackle him there Right, four minutes left. Right, let's actually get rid of it because we need to go to the watch along. This is going to be intense in the final four minutes of this game. Right, Jack Simpson going to Joe Walls. Long looping ball. Tries to find. Okay, this could be a small chance. Mark Harris. Etete. Leaves the box though. Okay, Mark Harris. Interesting Joe Walls, but it gives the ball straight to Bristol City there. And now it's looking like Bristol City was just trying to keep the ball away. Chris Martin passing it back. Cardiff trying to press. It's not working well so far. And Kipre will get ahead of Andy Vyman there. Ryan Wintle now in the midfield, passing it to Rube, uh, Perry and G, sorry. Looking like they're running out of options, Cardiff. Now to Ruben Colwell. Can pass it right there. Now, that's a great ball. Jack Simpson now on the ball. Can he get a good ball there? No, he gets really atrociously tackled by Chris Martin, of all people. Jack Simpson's had a really disappointing game. From um, He's the new signing for Cardiff from Rangers. Not done a great job for me. Been quite disappointed with Jack Simpson. Caught, well, wouldn't say caused it, but he was. At, he had a small fault in the first goal. But that's a great ball. Kane Wilson going through. And also just goes ahead of Naki Wells, who's very frustrated, Naki Wells, that Kane Wilson didn't have enough of a powerful ball to him. God, it was a great pass to actually find um, Kane Wilson going through on goal. That could have been game over for Cardiff there. Two minutes left 
of added time. And even with that, Bristol City looked the more likely to score. Wells scores just over the goal. This will suit Bristol City though. Just more precious time being wasted away. That is a brilliant one by Wilson. Perfectly timed. Gets ahead of Simpson. But the ball, the square pass to Naki Wells, just not powerful enough. But I will dare say, I just think Naki Wells wouldn't have got there anyway. I just think he just didn't quite get the power. But it looks like Naki Wells is being substituted off. And Tim Closer is on the pitch. And I did say Tim Closer should go on as well. But I didn't expect Naki Wells to be substituted off. But unsurprisingly, it's a clean sheet. And right now, Nigel Pearson has got to be as defensively secure as he can to making sure that he keeps all his great um, defenders on the pitch. Right. Oh, Cardiff just giving the ball away again in that midfield. Philogen Bidez is keeping the ball now. Has a great pass to Atete. Colwell does very well there. Colwell. And... Okay, this might be one of the last attacks we can get, actually, Philogene. Oh, good play, but good defending. No, a free kick given against Cardiff there, against Atete, fouling, Va um, not Varner there, Kane Wilson. They're going to a war man of match to Tom Conway, and I'm not surprised. I mean, he's done so, so well, Tom Conway, and I probably would have awarded to him as well. It's a sensational young player. And I honestly think he can have a really, really great season, actually. And Alex Scott has done a great job as well. But, I mean, Bristol City have got a good young core group of players. We've now reached the 95th minute. Surely it's game over. And three points for Bristol City. Bristol City fans singing in great numbers. Cardiff throw in. They're going to try and get an attack. Passing it back, which is not great for them if they're chasing the game. Full-time whistle's just been blown. On his 59th birthday, Nigel Pearson gets his second win in the season for Bristol City. His second win in a row. Two 2-0 two home wins in a row for Bristol City as well. This is what's going to help Bristol City this season. And it's good for them that they've actually fixed their home form as well. And I can actually... See some Bristol City fans, you know, singing in great, great harmony there as well, actually. They're in really, really great spirits. They are very proud that they've got the bragging rights of the Seven Side Derby. So the Seven Side Derby Part 1 ends with victory to Bristol City. It ends Bristol City 2, Cardiff City 0. What a result that is for Bristol City. We'll look at stats. And we'll slowly preview um, Leeds, Chelsea and West Ham, Brighton. And then we will get everything sorted. So I'm just going to quickly capture uh, everything there. Right. So let's look at this here. So stats wise, you can see it's been pretty back and forth with the attack momentum. And right at the end, whilst Cardiff needed to chase the game, just not looking like they're going to attack uh, with enough conviction there. 55% to 45% there in possession-wise. It's been the closest part. I mean, Cardiff having a lot more of the ball in the second half. But still, Bristol City out team them in both halves. 15 shots to 10. Three shots on target each in terms of goalkeeping saves. Three from Bentley and one from Allsop. Bristol City now in seventh place. Cardiff fall down to the bottom. Well, right just literally just below in the end of the top half of the table. Seven corners to eight, three fouls to one, 12 fouls each, four yellow cards to three. So pretty messy at times. Four big chances to one and three missed. Four of Bristol City really could have been more of a convincing win for them, which is crazy for them. Cardiff hit the woodwork twice, so they were quite unlucky in that front. But on the whole, Bristol City have earned it, in my opinion. Brilliant performance and shout out goes to Tommy Conway. Man of the match for me. A player that I've not known too much about. He's 20 years old. He's two years younger than me. Oh, my days. But he has done so, so well. 
and he's having a real breakout season there. And honestly, if he continues like this, he will stay as Naki Wells' partner in crime in terms of their um, attacking play. You know, Chris Martin was only introduced for 10 minutes on that pitch because Conway's done an incredible job. He won the free kick to get the second goal for Bristol City. And of course, he scored the first goal himself. He had a brilliant impact into this game. This actually made my day. Oh, that's really nice. Thanks, Coniston, for that. Needs versus Chelsea by the kickoff. Yes, right. Well, it's two o'clock now. So I'll just, all I'll do, I'll just quickly preview the lineups. If Chelsea beat Leeds, they will be seven on seven points, which they shouldn't have been. So, so yeah, they will be on nine. Um, yeah, exactly that. And we definitely should have beaten Spurs. But I want to try and move on. I want to try and move on. In my mind, Spurs will drop points more and will overtake them eventually. But it's it's not as easy as that. You know, we've got to we've got to stay competitive. I am a little bit worried, I dare say, about Arsenal at the moment. They're looking very confident right now. As you can see, nine points, three wins out of three. Um so yeah, both West Ham Brighton and Leeds and Chelsea are kicked off. I right, let's show you the teams. Fabianski with Cresswell, Keret, their new signing, which I've been told actually is from PSG, but a German defender there. Kurt Zuma with Kufal, Suchet, Declan Rice, Paolo Vornas with Saeed Ben Rama, Mikel Antonio and Jared Bowen. For Brighton, you've got Robert Sanchez, Adam Webster, Lewis Dunk, Joel Veltman, Solly Marsh, McAllister, Casido, uh, Trossard, Adam Lallana, Pascal Gross and Danny Welbeck. Brighton have actually not lost to West Ham since they got promoted from the Championship all the way back in 2017, which is crazy to know they've been in the Premier League for that long now. Uh, let's look at Chelsea and Leeds' starting 11. So let's look at Leeds' first. Melian goal with Stoichik, Lorente, uh, Lorente, sorry, Cock and Christensen. With um, Tyler Adams, Mark Roker in the midfield top double. With Jack Harrison, Rodrigo, Aronson and Dan James being the striker. Chelsea's squad looks like this with Edouard Mendy, Kaladu Koulibaly, Thiago Silva and Reese James. Cucurella starts but lost his cheek in the right hand side which is very intriguing to me. Jorginho, Mason Mount and Conor Gallagher. Also a very interesting move by Chelsea to start him. Raheem Sterling and Kai Havertz up front right there. So, I'm intrigued to see how those games are going to go. For me, Jorginho is lightweight. He's not good enough. I just don't see him suiting to the Prem. He's a great player, but I just don't think he's suited for Prem football personally. That's what I'd say about that. Anyway, is ended Bristol City 2, Cardiff nil. I'm just going to quickly talk through um, in terms of the stats of the stream. Just to talk through what we've achieved together. So we're on 22 likes. Thank you guys so much for the support today. I really, really do appreciate that. And guys, if you've not hit the subscribe button, now's the really, really good time to see it. Because I'm going to notice it and I have noticed it now. We're 1335, five subs for today, which is a decent stream actually in, uh, for me. So thank you guys so, so much. We've made a really good bit of progress for 1.3k to 1.34k. So thank you so much for that. That is truly appreciative. I really, really do. If you guys have liked what you saw, please do give the streamer like it just to help. Chelsea are only missing a light striker. Yeah, I know. We're so close. But even with that, I just almost think that I don't know what it is. It's just our attacking play as a whole, uh, to be honest. We need to be a bit more inventive there. Um, I don't know who Spurs play next, actually. I've, I've forgotten who they play next, actually. Is it Man City? I don't know who they play next, actually. I'll look into it. Um, but, 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 no, it's not Man City. They've got Forest. They've got Forest next. Oh, that's right, of course. Uh, tricky game, but I think Spurs will squeak a 1-0 win or something. It'll be something like that. It'll be a, it'll be a very, it'll be a very tight game, but it'll be like a narrow 1-0 win, I think. Right. But, but that'll be for next week in terms of my predictions in that one. Thank you guys as always. Thank you for the support. Please do give the stream a like if you've not done so. Please do hit the subscribe button if you've not done so. Please continue to share the channel. That also really helps. Thank you guys so much for watching, guys. The legendary for joining this video. And as always, I'll see you guys soon. It has ended Bristol City 2, Cardiff City 0. Bristol City get the bragging rights of the Seven Side Derby. I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys soon for my review video coming tomorrow. Take care, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.